What's going on? It's Jay Ellis from Nick of Time Show. Here to give you that Knicks talk just in the Nick of Time. And guess what, y'all? The Knicks just beat the Nets. And the Nets try to make it interesting, but we still beat them 111 to 107. All right? OG Ananobi gives you 15 points and two fields on the night. Josh Hart gives you 16 points and seven rebounds. Dante DiVincenzo gives you 14 points and six rebounds. Big Mitch came up big, gave you 25 minutes tonight and gave you 15 points and eight rebounds with six of those being offensive. Let's go, Mitch. Bojan gives you nine and Big Shot Brunson gives you 30 points and 11 assists. And according to Tommy Bear, he's the first Nick in history to give you 30 points and over 10 assists with zero turnovers. So bust those shots. Jalen Brunson, all right? The Knicks, despite being down 17 points in the first quarter, clawed back in the third, and outscored the Nets 30 to 13, and end up with the victory despite being out rebounded. And we're gonna talk about it all. Talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, and the win. At the end of the day, I do not care if it was close, because listen, we did not end up like the Celtics. <laughs> the win is a win is a win. And you know, I love when we beat the Brooklyn Paint Jobs, AKA the Gentrified Nets, all right? You know, every time we beat them, it is a good day for me, and we sweep the season series. So if you can find a Net fan anywhere in your vicinity, I want you to find them, and I want you to gloat. And I want you to point and I want you to laugh from your belly because <laughs> all that trash they were talking about with Kyrie and KD and they were in the championship and all that noise. Nah, nah, they didn't get nowhere. Ended up being an embarrassment and they try to rub it in our face. So I want you all to take this opportunity to kick them while they're down. All right. <laughs> so, so I'm going to introduce you to my guys and we're going to talk about this game. And also, um, Shout out to Nick Nader. He should be joining us later for Fan Friday. All right. So first and foremost, I'm going to let you introduce you to my guy, the Latin assassin, Lee Escobedo. What's going on, Lee? Jailus. Lee. Ebony. <laughs> this is the first time in my entire Knicks fandom that I can say the New York Knicks are a championship contender. Mm. I've never been able to say that before. And I can say that now without a doubt in my mind. It's a beautiful thing. We in, the, we in the building, we in the building, we in the building. There's certain things I still want to see, but there's certain things that I'm loving too. Uh, we can talk about that. We can definitely talk about that. Ebony, XD1 Boiler, how you feel? I'm feeling good. Um, it, it feels good. Like not once, even when we was down by 17, that I think we was losing this game. And I've never felt that way about a Nick team, like like Lee is speaking. Like we down by 17, and I'm like, it's early. Third quarter is ours. Like, and we're in the first quarter. And I'm saying this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I already I already knew that, you know, they're gonna go and get either, you know, Tibbs gonna chew them out, pause, no diddy. And then they, you know, they probably was feeling a certain type of way about their own self, you know? So the the third quarter will look different. And I, I think OG heard me. Cause I'm like, I questioned myself. I said, does Cam have OG's number? Yeah, it was weird. It was I cool. was like, does he have OG's number? Yeah, it looked like he has a direct line, right? <laughs> yeah, he did, he did, he did. For a minute, he did have OG's number. Like he, he was going by him, he confused OG a little bit. And then OG got mad and said, hey, I'm gonna show you what I'm about. And he impacted the game on both ends. Like yes. took over the game yes, on man. both ends. I, I'm sorry. I've been jumped out the window since I seen that sign, the, the Spider Man sign. But like they just keep they make they make me more confident every day. And Thibodeau was making me more confident in him, him also with his uh, rotations and moving and adjustment and things of that nature. And uh, there's a lot of apologies and things of that nature forms that need to be passed out for people. Whichever one you need to sign, just grab one. Just pass them. Just pass them <laughs> so we all together when it comes time to, 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 to get to the playoffs, man, because we're in a good spot. We're in, in a great spot. And um, Ryan G was in the building. I think he left the building, but, but hopefully he'll be back in the building and we'll introduce him. He'll talk next with us a little bit later. All right. But, uh, yo, I, I want to talk about that third quarter and the 
the the juxtaposition of that with the first quarter because the first quarter was absolutely awful. Jalen Brunson didn't score in the first quarter at all. He didn't really score until the second quarter. Uh, and that's when things started to churn a little bit. But that third quarter for us was really when we started to get it going. It's crazy because as Knicks fans, for the last three or four years, we have come, we've been used to the third quarter of Doom. And we haven't had a third quarter of Doom. I don't know. Like, I don't think we've had, have we had one this year? Maybe since first half of the season, the third quarter has traditionally been for us where we start to kick it into the next gear. And that's what's happened in that third quarter. Like Ebony said, OG and Anobi started going crazy. After Cam went off in that first half, he held Cam scoreless in the third quarter. Scoreless. And then scored all 15 points in that third quarter. And not only that, he called his own number. He says, I'm shooting a step back two pointer. <laughs> Um, because they guarded Jalen Brunson too much. I'm, I'm like, okay, Ooh. all right. I see you, OG, getting aggressive. I see you, but I see you, my guy. I, I feel like his defense and him and Jalen Brunson's offense really turned the tide for the Knicks. I don't want to um, speak out of turn, but in my fandom, I think really since Latrell Sprewell, and I didn't get to watch Latrell Sprewell, in the 20 years I have watched, I have never seen a player like OG and an OB in a Nets uniform. That specific play where he held Cam Thomas at the hip on his way to the basket and then threw down a vicious one-handed dunk. I mean, maybe Shumpert once, Wilson Chandler once. I, I was really in my head trying to think, when's the last time I saw a 6-7, 6-8 wing with a New York Nets uniform on do that specific move in a one-man transition game? It's a beautiful thing to watch. And then just Anthony watch it. Anthony Randolph? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he got all the way to the bucket. Trevor Reason? <laughs> Trevor Reason, maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe. That, that was a great Isaiah Thomas pitch. Shout out Zeke. Uh, one of the few things you can shout him out for. But OG, what a beast. And shout out Ebony again. I saw two plays today that have happened, not just this game, but the last couple games as I'm taking notes that I think have really helped unlock OG and also help Brunson be able to get the ball when they're throwing blitzes at him. The first one is when they're on the right side of the floor and Hart set a pitch for Debo off ball. Debo caught it, went close to the nail, and then set a pitch for Brunson with a dribble handoff. By that time, Brunson's on the right side of the floor and it allows him to go left. And all of these teams are trying to stop him to go left. That simple action which all you need to do is just tell your guys to do some off-ball movement, which we've been calling for. And Tibbs wasn't always doing. Now he is. These are the type of changes that he even props for. Now Brunson has easy access, single defender, Cam Thompson in front of him, and his left hand is free. To drive, he drove to the left at the free throw line, did a little floater. Money. Those are simple little things that Tibbs has been doing to make sure Brunson doesn't have to work too hard to score and to be able to counter the different levels of defensive, some more intense than others, that Brunson's seen in the second half of the season. The other one's for OG. OG got an off-ball screen on the left-hand side of the floor. He flashed to the three-point line, caught it, and then allows him to make simple reactions. He did either keep that momentum and go downhill, which he did a couple times. Boston, he was less uh, successful. I think the first time he got stolen, and the second time he, got, he rammed out at the rim. But today, he was much more successful, especially in that third quarter when he went off. They ran this action twice for him, and he did open a three-point line and went straight to the hoop and then did that pull-up shot as well. So these are just simple little things that I saw. Thinking about how Ebony sees the game and trying to see the game the same way, that they appreciate you, sister, for teaching me, that I've been starting to see Tibbs doing that has really given my argument evidence for how he's actually changing. We didn't see this type of action ran for RJ Barrett or uh, who else? Alan Burtz or Emmanuel Quickly in the last couple of years. Now we're seeing it for everybody. It's working for Brunson. Now let it work for OG. Yeah. When you're taking away some of your weapons, you have to be more creative with how to use your weapons you have. And I kind of think Randall being gone has forced Tibbs into being a lot more creative with the offense and it's paid off dividends for us. And, and another way, another way he gets OG open, very simple. Like we said, we talked about Josh Hart being used more as a, a guy who's a roller and not a guy who's a spot up shooter. You know, you pick your roll with Josh Hart. Hart sets the screen in the middle of the floor. 
dives to the middle, the <laughs> and they'll try to double Josh Hart. Easy pass to OG and OB the corner, open three. That's so yeah, Tibbs has really opened up the offense for us, and it's it's working. It's working. And it's funny because that first quarter we didn't really see it. I think Hartenstein not being here in the first quarter kind of disrupted the flow. I think Fair. we thought we had it. It was a lot of one on one. I just think we we under like we just thought we had it because it wasn't much cut and it wasn't much movement at all that yep. first quarter. And it wasn't much defense being played either. Our rotations was late and things of that nature. But again, I, I was not mad at that first quarter. For some reason it was just like, all right, we got we just played yesterday. Yeah. We're gonna get it together. You get what I'm saying? We're gonna get it together. Uh we missing pieces. We're gonna get it together. Um bogey was huge with helping us yes. kind of get back on the, the right right track. Again. You know, yeah, he when Brunson was 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 struggling because they did do a good job earlier on him. Um I I, I was laughing because uh I was laughing because they had they had uh Mikel Bridges fighting for his life. He refused to let Cam Thomas in that beginning uh guard guard uh Jalen Brunson he would forever switch it was the funniest thing to me I watched the whole couple like the whole court of of Mikel like doing whatever he had to do to get back to Brunson so Cam Thompson doesn't, would, would, doesn't have to Thomas wouldn't have to guard him even when they did when they did switch over on him and it happened that Cam Thomas had to guard him they would double him Immediately, McCall was like, "I right, forget it. I'm, whoever I'm going, I don't care. I'm going back over here." <laughs> so you see, you you see the attention that they was giving to Brunson, and, and they just didn't want no anybody else but McCall and a couple of other people to guard him one on one. It was pretty funny to see, uh, see the, the reaction to Brunson and how defenses, you know, react to him. Um, yeah. But he, yeah, but Bogey was Bogey was huge. He was huge in opening up the flow of the game to me. Um. And shouts out to my guy Mitch, hitting and making him uh, when it count. Yeah, no, no hacker uh, Mitch, no hacker no Mitch. Hack Mitch. Today, my baby was four. Was it five for eight? That baby was five for eight for the free throw line or something like that, right? Come on. Yeah, we'll That's see. Let's see. Let me look at the road. What, what, what was that? What was he that? was Mitchell Robinson. Five for eight, sixty-two percent from the free throw line over his his, his season high. His season high is what what thirty-eight percent. So he doubled the season high. All right, all right. <laughs> and my man tried the finger roll and then got his own board because he was mad he missed it and, <laughs> and, and dunked on somebody. Like, come on, like, and that's your the backup big. But like I said, it's levels to this. So let my guy get his legs back, and, and then it's gonna be lots of apology forms uh, being signed. I didn't want to ever bring this up when he was struggling or especially when he was out because I don't like hitting someone when they're down. But since Mitch had an unbelievable game and this might be his best game back, I do have one color critique that I think he really needs to work on this summer because there's not enough time for him to work on now into the playoffs. This is a summer thing. But his hands catching passes and being able to catch, corral, and make a move around the basket, I think he really, really needs to work on that. He's got those Nerlin Noel uh, hands right now uh, and I, I've seen him be better in the past but I think it's always been something with Mitch where he could use saw a softer touch and how he not just how he get, get, takes the ball in the past but what he does with it afterwards get into a position where he can make a quick action toward the basket that needs to be something I think a point of emphasis along with free throws that he needs to work on this summer just a simple critique I'm not bashing him he had a standout game nah, I get it I hear it I hear the no hands thing a lot but uh I was taught as a guard, uh, somebody that was forced to play point guard sometimes, that uh you don't give your you have you don't give your passes too to low. Your big man mm -hmm. too low mm -hmm. and you don't beam it if we're close to each other. You know, um you don't do that. That that was just just something that you you're taught. So when they lob it up, it ain't a question. So I'm not okay. gonna I, I, I'm Fair. not going to Yeah, no, I agree. I I agree. Um he does bobble the ball a lot, but um especially Bojan. Bojan in particular, he he found Mitch two times while he's driving to the basket. He was throwing the ball at his knees. The brother is seven feet tall. Wait, <laughs> hold on. Wait a minute. 
Bojan's the worst passer on the team. No one gets worse pass than Bojan. <laughs> no, Burks. But, but Burks. He is absolute Burks. ass as a passer. Burks is. I I, I think Burks might have my challenge. Nah, Burks. <laughs> I don't know. Nah, it's, it's Bojan. It's definitely nah, Bojan. Bojan. At bad. least the Bojan attempt the pass. Burks is a bad passer because he nah. won't do it ever. Nah, nah <laughs> Burks. True. The finger. The Doctor J Mitch finger roll was a Burks pass to to Mitch or You know how many times Burks miss Mitch. You, today, I'm not today. listen. I'm not saying. Yeah. I didn't say he's not a willing passer. I said yeah. when he does pass, at yeah, least yeah. it gets through his hands and Bojan not his knees. Terrible. I guess. I guess I, I'm, I'm giving this to Burks because he don't attempt. At least, <laughs> at least, at least Bogey trying. He said, "Let me, let me, not, let me see something. Let me, let yeah, me yeah, see bo- something." Bo- Bogey 0 for 82 with the passes. <laughs> terrible. But the one thing I'll say about Bogey though is. He had nine points in that second quarter, and we needed every single one of those nine Yo, points. For real, uh, like if you look at his box score, he what he, he has not. He finished with nine points. He finished with nine points, one steal, and one assist. But yeah, like it was out huge for playing that passing lane. I see you, Bogey. I get on you about you playing defense with your chest, but he was in that passing lane today. He was moving them puppies. My man in the fast lady got a steal. Mm-hmm. Started a fast break. What's up? Die be trying. This <laughs> bogey be trying. He does not. It's not an effort thing. He's just slow afoot. He's that's just it. He's just slow afoot. Uh, and but I don't know what's up. With, but yo, I don't know what's up with Alec Burks. When every time he steals the ball, he gives the ball right back. Do y'all notice? <laughs> Like every time he's a steal, it's a turnover right after, and it's like a turnover and a score for the other team. It's almost he it's, so he's so lax with the ball. Jay is ridiculous. It's it's so ridiculous. Everything is like he's too cool. Like I, I yeah. got the ball now. What's up? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like he trying to look fly while you playing. It's over that you, your fly days. Come on, you had a big big age. You already know you fly. Let's put, play ball. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's play ball. He got he like jealous. a little five five nine guy pulled the out uh the Jose uh Alvarado on him. Nah, from, I agree. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> came from behind, pours no diddy, and then <laughs> grabbed the ball. Come on. Come on. I, I told Jay Ellis before the show started, breaking news, Alan Burt still sucks. I mean, <laughs> nothing's changed since last game. Damn, last time we was up. L, that's an L, man. That's an L. That's an L. Oh, I mean, my bad. Wrong button. Wrong button. That's we would L. share that L together. We traded. I thought, going he, I thought, in. He, I thought he was going to be at least playable. Mm-hmm. I thought he was going to be at least playable, but I guess, mm-hmm. I guess it didn't happen. And somebody else who, damn it, wasn't playable too was Sims, man. Oh my gosh. Sims to start the game. Like when we went down in that first quarter. A lot of this, a lot of the problem was, like Ebony said, the ball movement. But then Sims, Sim had a lack of intensity guarding Claxton. Uh, I think he was getting really killed on the boards too. Um, our whole team was getting killed, but it was really noticeable with Sims. And it seems like Claxton was just just having a field day. And I don't know, maybe because he hasn't played in a while. And it might be rust and timing. The constant happens when you're sitting for a long time. You've gone with a two to three cents rotation that hasn't included Sims. And I think that might be why it went the way it went. But Sims is rough. And that third quarter, he turned it around a little bit. But whoo. That's what I was about to say. I felt like the first thing, he had to get, get the mo- rhythm of the game again. It happens. You yeah. sit on the bench. You got to find your place. Um, I thought he did well after like the... The second half, especially with the pick and rolls, I felt he stayed in front of people and things of that nature. Uh, he did he did better the second half. The first half was rough. I, I felt he uh adjust adjusted well enough in 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 the second half. I still believe he's our best perimeter big though, and and when he uh he's there, we can switch on everything. I heard you. I heard you. yeah. We had, we can switch on anything. So I think once we got once he got a little bit. His feet wet. Uh, when we started to to turn a corner defensively, and um, I mean, I think I, honestly, he almost got back in the game when Mitch started missing those free throws. But I'm really happy that Mitch found his niche. Yeah, 
And just to get back on Mitch for a second, this was a big game for Mitch and us. This was a huge game for Mitch and us because this is the most amount of minutes as Mitch has played since he's been back 25 minutes. He played the entire fourth quarter, most of the third quarter. I mean, I mean, I think half of the third quarter, most of the fourth quarter. He weathered the storm of missing free throws. And he made big plays. Because when I'm watching, I was when I was watching Claxton kind of dominate Sims a little bit, my mind went to to, you know what? Mitch usually dominates Claxton. That's what my mind went to. My mind went to Mitch usually wins this Claxton battle. And we need somebody and we need Mitch to step up and I'm glad he did because we had some huge offensive rebounds this game um even the offensive rebound where Brunson tried to iso I don't know who's iso he's isolating somebody on the right corner he missed it Mitch flies in out of nowhere grabs it with his long go-go gadget arms and passes right back to Brunson and then Brunson hits like a little dagger uh mid-range that was a huge play that was an yeah. extremely huge play so and that's what Mitch brings to us. He he brings to us extra possessions. Facts. And for those that and that's again what I was talking about vision to grab a ball and be su- surrounded. Pause. No, Diddy. That sounds wild, crazy. <laughs> to 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 grab the ball. <laughs> it's only one. When it's only crazy. We say balls. You only said balls. Yeah, yeah. no, it's still it's still in my head. My I guess my immature mind. It sounds <laughs> wild, crazy. But um, he grabs it in the crowd and finds the open shooters and gets them open threes. And, and, and he doesn't just pass it to anybody. It's the shooters. He's getting them open, more shots. Um, him and he used to find quickly a lot off the off the offensive back, uh, rebound, you know, to just get it to your shooter. Um, mm-hmm. I, so so people in their vision, it's just different different ways. I, I, I don't like to compare, compare iHeart and Mitch because you shouldn't have to. They're one. They're a unit. When I think of them, I literally think of one, one, not a one player, but that's how I, I see it on the court wise. Like just a uh, perfect sense of play. Like we're blessed. We're, <laughs> we're blessed. You, you you got Mitchie Robinson, who definitely would start the year as a defensive player of the year candidate. Yes. Uh, so you got him coming off the bench right now. Yeah. And, 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 and it's just like other teams are probably like, what the hell are we going to do with that? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? What do we do? When we got we we have our bench and you know trying to just hold it down for our stars, and you got Mitch Robinson holding your paint down, that'll that'll force a, a coach to put play his star faster than he wants to, or maybe more more than he wants to. Maybe you stagger him a little bit more. And again, he's doing this and he's not in game shape, y'all. <laughs> he's yeah. still not there. And he's like not the, there. The more he's in shape, the more you get to see certain lineups like this. Like we got to see Mitch and OG in, in the lineup today more. To, to and then close they're the game. The game. they're learning how to play with each other. Like it was a p- defensive possession. I'm watching them just switch each, with each other or 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 play their players to each other. Like they're playing off each other, you know. Um, so that's go- only going to get better as as games go by and in the playoffs practices. And and Conda, or uh, they said something in in uh, the Knicks. I, I think it was Mike Breen. Who was talking about OG? How he he like I said he was gonna do or Julius Rand? How would people ask how would he come back in this this um with this team? And I'm saying he's probably watching a bunch of film. And they said OG was doing that to see mm-hmm. where he could fit in and things of that nature. So yeah, this, this team is they just want it. We got a bunch of dogs, and Mitch is only gonna get better. And as you can see, every game he shows you a little something else that he he will try on offense. You know um so. That finger roll, we ain't never seen him try to finger roll before. That's the that, that's the second finger roll, actually. He he finger rolled the first time he came back, actually. It's the second finger okay, roll. Okay, I don't remember. I ain't remember that. You know my memory shot. <laughs> <laughs> when he did it the first time, I was like, yo, what is that? But the one the one thing I'll say is I still feel like like Nick's guards need to try to I mean it might be kind of late for this, but experiment more with Mitch because I feel like Mitch was able to even to even attempt it because they actually gave him the ball. Alec Burks, the guy who who doesn't usually pass the ball, actually gave Mitch the ball kind of far away from the basket on the move where we had to kind of improvise. <laughs> and uh, he usually gets he usually gets the lobs. He usually gets something close to the basket. So that's why you never really see a, a Mitch finger roll before until we saw it today. 
But maybe if we give him those little bounce passes as he's rolling to the basket, you might see some more stuff like that. So we, I think we just need to experiment a little bit more or, or trust him a little bit more in those scenarios just to see what happens. Um, again, it might be a little bit too late for that going into the playoffs, one game left. But maybe in the summer and next season, that's something we can see from Mitch. I, I know Lee hasn't speak, so sorry. I just want to say real quickly that uh, with with Mitch, I think we see more lobs. I think we see more passing uh, in the next game and the playoffs because I think now they're just letting him get his legs. You don't want to throw it up knowing that he can't get up right now. Things of that nature. Like maybe they're saving him from himself, but when uh, when when those legs are there, the, I feel like the Josh Hart lob. I see it. I, I don't know. I, I see that. And um, I'm hoping that well, I guess it manifested. But I see once the 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 legs are there, that more more they probably attempt that more. I agree. I, I agree. And should we all talk about Josh Hart? Sure. Definitely want to talk about Josh Hart a little bit too, and we and Jalen Brunson being a man. But salute to the chat, man. First of all, shout out to Nick Nader. I don't think he's here yet. I sent him the link. I know he's to join for Fan Fridays. He was at the Garden. It might be pandemonium there. He might be fighting with his brother because his brother's a Nets fan. <laughs> but maybe he's making his way. But I, but hopefully Nick Nader will be able to join us soon. In the meantime, though. In the meantime, though, if you do want to join for Fan Fridays and you want to talk some Knicks basketball with us, the link is pinned to the top. And there's also a link that I'm putting in the chat where you can join us at the KOT show and talk with us on about Fan Fridays, your thoughts on the Knicks, your thoughts on the future, your thoughts on the past. Uh, you can rock with us. All right. So shout out to people in the chat. Shout out to shout out to. Oh, shout out to Glamour. Glamour. Where you been, Glamour? Shout out to Glamour Knicks. Picks for shout Timmy. Shout out to Prez the Boss. Shout out to you. Shout out to yo, Orange and Blue Skies in Africa. Shout out to our guy watching in Africa. <laughs> he, I think he's I saw from the other other post. He's from Canada, but he lives in Canada now. Oh, he lives in Canada? Oh, okay, okay, okay. He Let moves. me know if I'm right. I, my memory will be shot and I'll be seeing stuff and mixing people up. So don't excuse me. But I think that's what I read last post for our last game. So, okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. Shout out Africa and Canada, whichever way you at. That's shout all right. I'm, I'm coming up for Carabana. It's cool. Shout out to Canada. <laughs> shout out to Nick Yak as well. Shout out to Neymar Seacon, uh, Picks for Timmy, Space Ghost. Everybody else is rocking with the, the KOT show. Uh, we BSN shout Queen. Shout BSN out Queen in the building. The other half of balling with Let's the Queen. Let's go. I'm loving, I'm loving the estrogen, man. We need more estrogen in here sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Glamour Nicks, for real, where you been, sis? I missed you, but I I, I spoke to her, her. We used to have combos today on, on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> shout out Glamour Nicks, though. Bro. Yeah, yeah, shout out. Always shout out Glamour Nicks. All right? And VSN Queen, who's been popping in lately? My big sis. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, welcome, welcome to KLT fan. Welcome to KLT fan. All right? Oh, oh man speedy recovery i see that speedy recoveries i didn't know that damn sorry to hear that grandma damn that's i'm good yeah man hope you're good hope you're good i right. got to a car accident and that's crazy mm-hmm. this is why i gotta appreciate people when they're around you never know what's yep. happening and what they be going through exactly <laughs> it's a prime example see that's why it's okay to be nice to people because you never know what they, they're going through People, That's a fact. people may smile and it just you know they say that the, the strongest people they put in a smile but that don't mean you know that everything is hunky dory so just just be nice to the people you know? That's a fact. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to fight with Anthony MSG less. I'm trying to make him, trying, trying to make him my new bestie. Nah, I'm supposed to win this chip baby no more beef. I feel you. Nah. Nah, I feel you. I've been all going right. through hell for a year. Let's, let's I feel take like I've been all... having a, a, a good two months of peace. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to ride this wave. <laughs> life be life in y'all like i said life be life in. i understand life be life it's, it's, it's hard out here we're a crazy world we trying to stay sane and i get it exactly um, exactly so but salute to the Knicks family sage sage and nick's path yo sound of sage and nick's path i still feel like that's the hardest name out there maybe because i'm an anime nerd <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, we take that. all our animosity on the other fan bases, y'all. We got we as fans got to get into player form. It's time to go to battle with these fan bases. Get get ready, y'all. Exactly. As, as I, was, my... I, I was arguing with a Celtics fan <laughs> all today. Oh yeah, they my bro, <laughs> they my bro pick. Making all the excuses. <laughs> they're, they're my bro pick. I, they like Kobe says. So. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> feel it, feel that pain. Yeah, that's so he's they salt. They make oh, excuses. Oh man, they were sulky. But y'all, uh, man. Yo, salute to the chat though. If you want to if you want to join the video live for us on fan fries, click that link and rock with us. Fritz, if you want to join, you can. The tips to Timmy. Anybody else? I want Fritz. Yeah, man. I know it's if you want to join, you can and let us and talk Knicks basketball with us. Um yo, Josh Hart was crazy today, man. <laughs> Josh yeah. Hart. He, this is this is the thing about our team versus the Celtics team. All right. The Celtics team extremely talented. For sure. But our team naturally just has a motor. Mm-hmm. They just have a a, a desire and they take losing personally. And when we were smacking the Celtics around, I'm not sure if they were really taking it personally. Like it didn't look like they were taking it personally, but I feel like that's just not who we are. Cause, cause Josh Hart always goes a million man miles a second. And the last few minutes of that second quarter, he went all out and he hit a couple of big threes. But that three that he hit to end the half Mm -hmm. was really telling to me because of his body language after he made the three. Like when he made after he made the three and walked off, he just looked pissed and disgusted with himself and the team that they were even down 17 points. And that's the type of attitude that I like in my team. And that's why I rock with the Knicks as hard as I do right now, because no matter what happens, whether we're down, up, or whatever, they take losing personally. They take not having effort personally. And when you have that in your DNA, nine times out of ten, you're not going to be laying eggs, um, and just faltering because of lack of effort. And and that's that's what. Hold it. It's in the building. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Let's go. It's in the building. <laughs> My main man, the fifth beetle. Yeah, the fifth beetle, the KOT show. I mean, how many people was in Boys the Men? It was four still, right? Is it four? It or was five? four. I think. I think Destiny Child had five though. Okay. Didn't Temptations have five? <laughs> we could be Destiny Child. I'm cool with that. <laughs> you can be Destiny Child. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm Kelly. It's- all right. <laughs> I'm Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, fine. I don't care. Kelly is fine. Kelly is very pretty. <laughs> no. She is. She's very pretty. Uh, man. Yo, salute. Fritz. Salute to Fritz, man. Fritz, do you have any thoughts on the game, man? Or, or, or the next move forward? Because I know Fritz be the one who be talking about money. He be talking about next moves and all that stuff. So I, I want to, what are your thoughts on the game? You on mute? You uh-huh. on, you, you muted, Fritz? Is your mic? Hold on, Fritz. First of all, Fritz. First of all, before Fritz starts going, I'm noticing mm-hmm. the the mic quality. Wait a minute, Fritz. You ain't get the. You ain't get. Wait a minute. What you playing in, Fritz? Wait a minute, Fritz. Wait a minute, Fritz. What you moving away? Fritz. He moved it away. <laughs> Fritz. That ain't no, this ain't no USB plug into your computer, Mike. You got the official tissue. What you, what you building over there, Fritz? Let's go. <laughs> oh, you gotta plug your, you gotta, your, your mic ain't working. Hold on. You gotta plug your mic into the right socket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you, Hashtag it's... Fritz Hive. I love that. And, and, twi- and Twitter, and Twitter uh, spaces, we call us being in the matrix, Fritz. <laughs> <laughs> you get you're getting your neo on right now. We this is your first time you. using the mic on live. Yeah, you, you don't know how to use how to where to, where to plug in the right. I'm trying to read his lips. <laughs> 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 I 
Oh, man. <laughs> but we got 77 in the chat. You can join us for Fan Fridays if you want to. Nick Nader, Nick Nader hopefully, hopefully he joins us a little later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he, he could plug in his event. Yeah, because Nick Nader got a event coming in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. Yes. No, I just plugged up this this um camera that's just threw everything off. Got you, got you. I swear wait a minute, Chris. First off, you got the fancy mic. What you got playing, man? What you got <laughs> this ain't the this ain't the sixty dollar USB joint. Stuff. You got the the joint. <laughs> yeah, I got some stuff. He's a tax time, baby. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I'm on the way. I'm on the way. <laughs> NBA yep, economy. Yep. Coming soon. Yep. <laughs> right. Yeah, I yeah, I enjoy the game. It's always it's always nice beating the Nets. So you know what I mean? You know, they always get up for the get up for the game, no matter how bad their record is. But um <laughs> yeah, Cam Cam Thomas, man, they were just I don't know. They just let him green light, green light the day. Yeah. Nah, yeah, you are right about that. It's what was interesting like to me team. is Mikhail Bridges was on the bench in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Is, he's yeah, a restricted just... free agent this year, Prince. Uh, um, uh, Mikhail? Yeah. Is he a free agent? I don't know. I don't think he's no. he's a free agent. I think he's a okay. few years. He has a few years uh, left. I think he's on extension, if I remember correctly. Okay, okay, okay. They signed mm-hmm. him already. Yeah. It might yeah. have been a sign trade, too. I can't remember. Exactly. Yeah, he has a few years left on that contract. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. My thing with Macau Bridges yeah. is the Nets refused to trade him. And the rumor was four picks for Macau Bridges. At this point... No. His value is not four picks. Like, there's no way you can. There's no way in hell. There's no Houston, way in hell. Houston offered it. Houston, Houston offered it. Houston offered four back. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But there is no way in hell he's even worth four picks at this moment. If you're benching him in the fourth quarter of games on a losing season. And you have Cam Thomas running the show, and you're running the offense through Cam Thomas, and not the guy who who's worth for like it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make they, sense. They've been out. Of, they've been out of it for a while, and then I, I don't. I don't see it hasn't been Cam Thomas's show all year, and they've been out of it for a while. I don't know why they wait to the end. Well, now you give Cam Thomas the green light, mm-hmm. but but yeah, they they were never in it. They were never in it this year. I'm not sure what they're doing. Like it doesn't make sense what they're doing over there. Um understood. Understood. Your jail. Yeah. If you don't mind, I've actually been thinking about this all day. I have a few questions I've always wanted to ask for it's I wanted to interview okay. him. I, I I wanna give him an opportunity. Not many people know he is the fifth Beatle to the KOT crew. Yep. There is five of mm-hmm. us, and Fritz is the fifth guy. Exactly. He's the Billy Preston okay. of the group. So Absolutely. Fritz, the first one I start out. I, I've never actually heard your story of being a Nits fan. I've had the opportunity to tell mine. How did you become a Nits fan? Is it a family tradition? Is it a team that you found when you were younger? And what's one of your early memories of being a Nits fan? Okay. Um, well, my dad was like a huge like Patrick Ewing fan from like Georgetown, like all the way back to Georgetown. Um, I think he always uh, he could always identify with the the um, him being an immigrant. Come to the United States, you know. My dad also. My dad came from Haiti. Uh, he came to the United States. He played sports, played soccer. Uh, so he always identified it, but he didn't want to like. My dad, like, once he left soccer, he didn't want to soccer again. He didn't want to play it again. Nothing. So basketball became kind of his thing, and he just gravitated to the Knicks. And I kind of did my front runner thing. You know, watching the Celtics, 86, you know, you know, MJ was a big influence. Um, you know, I, I don't want to get to it, but there's some family connections. But so MJ, all that kind of stuff. And after after MJ got his first his first um um 
championship, I was all in with the Knicks because I've watched the Knicks since 86, even though I wasn't really rooting for them. Um, the 90s Knicks, they they just played so hard. Like yeah. that was the that was always the appeal. It was never pretty. It was never pretty. I know, I know a lot of people say, oh, the 90s was so great. The 90s was ugly. Yeah, it was. But they played <laughs> hard. <laughs> it, it, nice. They played so hard and they would just like suffocate teams. And it was ugly. Other, other teams probably couldn't stand looking at us. But we just had this one thing that we could do well, and we and we just yeah we just suck it, suff suffocated teams. From nineties on, I was in, I was in, a lot of losing, but I, I'm I mean I'm I'm on for rides. So if we, you know, Let's go. Leon Leon seen he Leon seems to have the formula. You know, Hermione, you're kind of doing gonna, that now. <laughs> We're like winning. One, one of these days, one guy. <laughs> Who's the guy? And then everybody else is just digging in and playing ugly. I mean, we're just we're set up good for the future. They just like I, I know for so long, like for like even the last few years, the Knicks is like, oh, we got seven and eight picks, and we can we can put all these eight picks in a trade. Knicks ain't talking about putting no eight picks in no trade no more. Like Knicks, Knicks, those days are gone. Like Knicks are gonna do something smart. And then we'll have stuff in the future. There's teams willing to throw everything in the pot. The Knicks aren't going to throw everything in the pot. Like they want to win now, and then they want to be good five years from now, still be good. So I, I think the the formula is there. Jalen Bunsen is leading the charge. I don't think I've seen anybody. I I don't. I haven't seen. A Nick as effective as Jalen Brunson, even when Ewing was in his prime, it was different. It was it was slow, it was methodical, and he was like, he, I mean, he, he was hurting through through the, through all those years. So it's I different mean, than he, when you're a center like, versus a guard. I think that's yeah, the and thing. He, and, Again, they called him a warrior for a reason. Like he, yeah. it, it was pain. It was pain for it's pain, for, pain for you. And Jalen was making it look good for the first when time. Leon, when Leon Rose was hired, was there a specific move that he made that let that you felt okay? This is going to be different because of either someone he got rid of, or someone he brought in, or a position that he went out and filled that maybe we didn't have beforehand, or an asset that he got, or a trade that he made? Was there kind of an initial move as he was building his front office that gave you a lot of hope for the future that he would turn this thing around? Okay. I think when it comes to Leon Rose, it's kind of the trades he doesn't do. Because there's there's a lot of, there's been a lot of trades that they said, oh, the Knicks, oh, we'll make him available if you give us too much. And yeah. every time somebody asks for too much, Leon's like, nah. And uh, all the fans, I mean, they'll turn on him. The Gordon but Haywood Leon one was is not going to overpay. Yeah, the Gordon Haywood um, non non signing was 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 one that stuck out. Bless you, No, no, that was fake. You know, I'm allergic oh. to Gordon Haywood. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got a bum allergy mm -hmm. too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there's been a lot of even. Let's let's remember to last summer when they were talking about um, Clippers and um, Paul George. Yeah, like give us way too much for Paul George. This summer, if Paul George wants to come to New York, he can come to New York. Like, I mean, they'll do a trade. It's not going to cost what they're talking. Remember last summer they were talking like every pick we had, plus R.J. Barrett, plus Mitchell Robinson. That's that's. That's not where we're at right now. I got two more questions for you, Fritz. Mm -hmm. Next, you, for me, I always think about history. I, I love thinking about the Knicks mm -hmm. through the lens of history, and I think you do too. Anytime I bring something up in the past, you're one of the few people who comments and remembers what I'm talking about. But you also have a mm -hmm. really strong mind for finances, and you're thinking about the team in terms of cap flexibility. Where do you see this team, and is this a team that you think is worth going to that first uh, apron on? And if it's not, what kind of move would you made? I, would you make this? I summer think they have. Salary? I think they have to. They have to go into the first eight. I, I I don't I don't see how they don't do it. I mean, there are ways that they can, you know, avoid it. 
But the problem isn't going over the first set of aprons. It's It's doing it multiple times over th in three years. Don't do it two times in three years. So I, I think what they're going to do is they're going to go over, make sure they go under the second time. You know, I, I think they're going to they're gonna finesse the system where they're not going to violate it so that it, it hurts them too much. Love it. Dope. Mm -hmm. And okay. Oh, go ahead. No, nah, I because you know what? There's um we've talked about Julius Randle before. Mm -hmm. You had you came over here with the hot take, and you said you felt mm -hmm. like Julius Randle would be moved. But I'm not sure I, if you said that I'm not I think that was before the surgery news came out. I, I think that was before the surgery news. I I okay. I think whatever Leon Rose is doing, Julius, Julius and him have to come to an agreement. And I, I, I think I kind of like the way Leon does business. He does it kind of like family business. It's like, hey, we're gonna work together. What do you want? Okay, if you don't, if you don't want what we want, we're gonna put you in a good situation. But hey, this is what we want to do. I, I don't think it's going to come out of nowhere where Julius just wakes up and is traded. Right? I think it'll be a situation when Julius is like, hey, I want to make $55 million and the Knicks can't do it for me here. I th and I think I think if if, if their the finances are in line, I think Julius is here next next year. I think so, I, I think, too. I, I, mm -hmm. I think so, too. And now how everything is falling out, people, people talking about bring Cat here, I don't see it. People talking about Donovan Mitchell, to me, he still doesn't make sense. The more and more I'm thinking about it, I, I feel like I feel like it might be Paul George. I feel like it might be Paul. I don't I don't know how, but like I I just know that we've been talking about needing a OG Adanobi light here. And he's been relatively Healthy this season. Um, I don't know. Hopefully, knock on wood, be two seasons in a row. But I love the I love the chemistry that Dante has with this team. Mm -hmm. But if you were to think about somebody who you can plug and play ahead of Dante, um, that would I, make kind of sense. Macau would definitely. I know you're not gonna like it, but I. Hmm. I, I've I've been saying Lamelo since, and it doesn't. It, it, there's a couple reasons because his you saying Lamelo salary is solid. Yeah, I think Lamelo could be here. The, the Lego. <laughs> <laughs> that's that young Lego right there. Hey, yeah, Lego, that's, a, young, that's a young Lego. Young Lego. Young, and young Lego. Lego. He Family like, of he Legos. Liked the outside. He liked the outside. Okay, because he liked to be yeah, outside. Um, he likes to be outside, <laughs> and um, the the one thing about Lamelo is one thing about the Knicks. We've always been undersized, right? We've haven't had a backcourt where you say, "Hey, that's a the proper size backcourt." I, I think I think to have someone that size, wait, right, six seven, six eight, mm -hmm. and you could still have Dante on the team. If that's still a possibility. I think you can do it. And I think as many games as he's played the last couple of years, like he's missed a lot of time. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe he could be getting gotten this time. My last question, Fritz, with this team mm -hmm. finally back to dominance after 20 years, more than 20 years mm -hmm. when you first started watching, what does this resurgence mean to you? And what are some of the parts of this new team do you find most special and matter the most to you as a fan of this team? Um, I, I'm just loving it because it's it's this is the first time in my fandom that the Knicks have attractive basketball. It's like we we have we we stuck you know our calling card is still defense, mm -hmm. but this this offense is something we we haven't had. We, maybe 2012, 2013, we had like that one year that was great, but never never like this. Well said. I, Never like this. I agree. I'm so blown. You said Lamelo. You like you like. Mm -hmm. Isn't the what what's what's the price tag for Lamelo? Uh, 
Like, I feel like that would take a lot. I think it's like 30. He's like 36. Oh, it's not that much as like, I thought. Yeah, because he's it's first, it's his first extension. Mm. So he he's I think yeah, I think he's like around 38. I cannot see your the horn is giving away a Lamelo at this point, especially through going the growing pains I, and you're looking around at who they also sure. have around them. Like I'm not sure what's going on in Charlotte. Like um you know, they're looking for the coach and they have a women coach on the on the on the list. Like Okay, if you want a woman coach, that means that you're uh, you're a you're a franchise that can handle that. But when you have when you have bridges on the team, you couldn't <laughs> handle that. <laughs> you got Liz, Liz, Lindsay Hart, and she's not been a, a softy, you know, during her career. She yeah, had, she had a tumor, you know, she had some problems in her career also, you know. Um, if anything, yeah, if I you, just. It, and uh, I'm not, I'm a, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. If, if you want to go through problematic, you, mm-hmm. they might need a woman's coach to be honest to to put to to put to put them in place. Because one thing uh, you know they're not gonna do is is is, is baby these these uh players. You understand? They, they, mm-hmm. She's probably gonna come in there like I have to make a name for myself. You know? You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I, I gotta make a name for myself. I can't let you like how Tibbs is doing with a bench player. That's what the, she going to come in there and do with the rest of the play. You not messing up my job, young yeah. young uh, abuser. Not you. Yeah. <laughs> young abuser is crazy. Yeah, you, but usually with like a young star, they usually want to couple with a specific coach to bring out a certain, you know, a certain quality. Like, I just don't, I just don't see the correlation. No, none of the, none of the coaches they interviewed are head coaches. But maybe maybe her 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 because she just won the G League Coach of the Year. So maybe yeah. her her uh mm-hmm. like you her her connections with the younger player in the G League is mm-hmm. why they maybe want to to look at her now. That's that's you know maybe that's that's why. Because yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Like these guys really don't need to be around a woman. They really don't. If from what you see, respect women all that much. You get what, yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm yeah. saying. Mm-hmm. So to, to put a a woman's coach, it might be two or two things like they're trying to do, uh, how you call it when they want to reverse your reputation, like media control kind of thing, trying mm, to show, hey, that's a good point. We, we, yeah, you know, so so it might be who knows with that team, but young abuser, I would love to, for him to have a woman coach, especially like Lindsay Harden, because she's not a, she's not not soft. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> This is this is this is when it's beneficial to have a woman on your panel. <laughs> Give you that perspective when it comes to topics like this. But yeah, you you really feel like I, I really feel like Knicks are going after Paul Giorgio. Like it just makes especially no, the I, price I think, so. I think he could. I I think Paul George could could fit. He could fit. You got he's gonna have to. He he he's not gonna get that. Um, Nah. He's not gonna get that super max. Nah. Like he's not gonna get that um what's it? Jason Tatum, uh no. Jalen Brown. Like Wait, I don't seven. think I don't think Leon Rose is going for that. I think there's gonna be a price. If you wanna come down on that price, I think, you know, come on in. Yeah, and it's like he's Julius Randle's boy. He's a guy where <laughs> you he can play the he can play his role. He can he can be the guy who spots up shoots and he can be the guy who can run the offense at the same time. Like he always made sense to me. It's always just been the injuries. But if you're not if you if you're just giving up if you're looking at this team and you're just giving up picks at this point and, and filler, then I can see it. Yeah. I I, th- I think there I think there might be you know if you get Paul George. Maybe you know if if the Golden State cuts um uh Chris Paul, maybe Chris Paul does his farewell. You know, because that's what he said last time is he wanted I'm to good. end it in New York. I'm good. I'm maybe good on that, man. I'm sorry. Water. I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm, good. I'm sorry, y'all. CP3 like in his prime was one of my favorite. Me players, too. Like all the time. But like, I mean, but like off the bench. He's a savant. Off the yeah, bench. off the bench. He's a savant. You looking for somebody to run your offense and they'll take if, if he's taking that end of the career kind of contract? Why not? No, I'm good. 
I think this is this is the the table set. Like this is the point where you know if you if you want to join, if you want to get that ring, it may be nah. time for you to. I'll take that little contract and nah. get the end of the bench. I feel like we have. <laughs> I feel like if we have a Paul George who we can run stuff through, then mm-hmm. I don't think we need a Chris Paul. I think we can still keep going with Deuce and build him up to take the next step of being a playmaker, and then still have him kind of be a combo with Paul George off the bench. I don't think we need a Chris Paul at that point, and especially like we. It, it keeps our defensive intensity up if we just keep growing Deuce the way we're growing them. I, mm-hmm. I, I get it, but instead of Alec Burke. Kinda, it would be Chris Paul. I I would take something like that. Like you know what I'm saying? I exactly. I take I take I take something like that. And Paul George again. If the only reason way I I would want Paul George on this team is he taking that end of the career contract kind of contract too. You get what I'm saying? We're not trying to pay yeah. all star uh, all star Paul George. You passing you like it's a, you putting up good numbers, but that that age there, sir fella. Yeah, it, you got to work with us. Like I feel like it'd be like Bogey and. I don't know. <laughs> like Bogey's a con. We got Bogey to be traded. Like we got Bogey to be traded. <laughs> so it'll be Bogey and something. You know what I'm saying? By the way, mm-hmm. we need to hear the Kane and Undertaker music because we got Pitts for Timmy and Ryan G in the building. <laughs> Let's go! Yo, what's good, Ryan G? What's the good, Kane my God? Pitts for Timmy. Oh. <laughs> oh, man, was good, slipped yeah. in like a ninja. <laughs> Stuck back in the my building. Guys. No, full spotting effect. Yeah, man. Ryan G, you off mute? You good? Mm, yeah, I'm straight. Just going through some things at the moment, but uh, I'm straight. Got you, got you, got you. All right, all right, all right. right. And pick for Timmy. Thanks for joining us. Pick for Timmy. No doubt, man. Y'all was in a good flow, man. I didn't want to ruin it, man. Y'all was going in. Uh, my guy Fritz was getting the the life uh, the the lifestyle rundown, man. <laughs> getting the whole biography <laughs> going, man. It was dope. My um, guy. Love for it. It's good to see that, man. No doubt, no doubt. I mean, y'all pretty y'all went through a little bit of the game tonight, man. Um, yeah. We, um, as far as like uh, the end of the fourth quarter, I I, I was kind of getting pissed off a little bit. Well, one of the things I've noticed about like with Tibbs, if you look at like the minutes, he's really been kind of not trying to go over thirty five minutes with OG, and that's like crazy for me to see with Tibbs, man. Like that's like a a big like change for that dude to me. Mm. Yeah, he's been he's been really good with his minutes restrictions lately. Um, even with Hartenstein, because the reason Hartenstein didn't play actually was because the game before he played, what I think he played thirty three minutes for the first time since his Achilles injury, and they didn't want to push it. Uh so they they sat him this game. Um, so the Knicks have done a really good job just monitoring his situation, um, taking baby steps on his minutes and wrapping him up. Um, and now that they pushed him to the limit, they just kind of just take the day off, let Mitch get it. And he can ramp him up, start to ramp him up as well. So I, I really like the way they just, they just manage the minutes um, so far. And, and yeah, Tibbs, training staff, all those guys have just done a good job. It's like a part of me wants to like know like, is that like the front office like working through the medical staff to just get Tibbs to make up his mind and be like, yo, I can't go past this limit past this limit <laughs> restriction? Cause I know like when it when it started getting tight, normally that's Tibbs, Tibbs would be like, yo, look, I, I don't care what the restriction is. OG get in there and guard Cam. Cause Cam was getting a little too hot. Yeah. But, like I'm really proud of him, man. Like this year, Tibbs says the job that he's done with having the, the squad with with the injuries, Mitch being out, OG being out, uh, Julius being out, um, being able to freestyle, as Ebony says, you know, we can invite him to Rap City real quick. Um, the adjustments that he's made and also the offense. Um, I, 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 Lee, I know you watch a lot of Dallas games, right, um, before the season. So you were watching Jalen Brunson before he came over. So you wanted a few people that were on the train with Jalen Brunson. Before we got to the season, I commend you on that, bro. Um, their offense going into that playoff series against, uh, we'll, we'll take it back, when they were playing Utah, the first time he killed Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that spread <laughs> offense was crazy, right? Because you're, you're, you're able to spread the floor. I think um, you pointed it out last game too, uh, Lee. Them bringing that high pick and roll out for Brunson 
allows Brunson to invite that double team. Like, yo, come on, just bring that double team on. Let's get it. And as soon as they initiate that double team, you're in trouble. We got shooters yep. all over the place. If y'all can't get to the rim fast enough to get a rebound, we're going to rebound over y'all and kick it back out. You got to go through the same thing again. It's all fire, man. Um, I'm just really enjoying seeing this. And um, let me throw some controversy in here, too. Let's get it. Do you think – let's let's get it. Let's get it. So I threw it in the chat a little bit earlier. What do y'all think this offense looks like when Julius comes back? Do we stay with a free-flowing offense, or do we go back to stagnant, non-movement, stay where you are so I don't turn the ball over offense? <clears throat> Uh, I'll take this first. Yes, great point about the high pitch and roll. One thing that I think is the key to unlocking that is I heart. I heart being there at the nail when he has that high that high double pass into I heart, and then I heart has the whole floor to either as you said find an open shooter or you hit OG or Precious cutting back door. That's been one of our most successful plays that we've ran all season. Again, another sign that Tibbs is putting little wrinkles into their offense to make things more diverse and take the load off of Brunson, unlike with Derrick Rose face in Chicago. Uh, Julius, it's going to be on Julius Randle, I think, to acquiesce to the rest of the team. Like, this team is too efficient. We have proven we can maintain and even exceed expectations. Without him, he's not to fit into this new offense, rather than us retrain our guys to fit to his style. Now, his mm -hmm. ISO play to me, the bat to the basket, the mid-range dominance, that can still be unleashed when guys are off. When D Devo's having a tough game, when McBride's having a tough game, or they're really blitzing uh, Brunson, yes, that's a break glass let Randall an ISO cook one on one or one on two. But otherwise, he's gonna have to make quick decisions and quick passes when he catches the ball in a high or low post. Uh two things, two things. One, because we get a little we get technical here a lot. We're, we're gonna be more technical with Lee learning stuff. People don't know the <laughs> nail. Nail in basketball terms is the foul line, the center of the foul line. Just just so to clear that up. Two. Great point. Um, two, when, uh, I feel like it's going to be a mixture. Like, I feel like it's going to be a mixture because there was so much success with the amount of open threes everybody got when Julius Randle was posting. Um, so I don't think the Knicks will abandon that completely. Like there was a, like I said, in the beginning of the season, Jalen Brunson was hitting a lot of threes. And his percentages dipped once Julius Randle left because they had to find another ways for him to get open threes. Now, I feel like they found more of a rhythm now where he's starting to find where to get his threes again. Um, but I think I think you can't abandon that completely. I, I, I think you kind of have to find a way to marry the two to get Julius Randle involved in those actions and then be able to kind of move into a post-up as well because... Uh, I, I think, I think we were just finding a rhythm. Like I keep saying, that game where where Julius Randle got hurt, uh, when we played Miami, to me that was his best passing game, I think I've ever seen <laughs> from Julius Randle like since he's been here. Uh, and it's unfortunate he got injured when he did, uh, but he he was really starting to figure out how to pass, how to actually post. He was actually having success posting Bam out of bio. One on one, which he didn't have the year before, uh, so I think we just we're just gonna end up blending the two. Is how I see it. Yeah. I I agree. I agree with that. Like, it has to be a balance. I think when when you see lows like a first quarter like we had, uh, maybe you put you in in the post and let him go one on one or or let them double him. There's another playmaker, somebody else that could command doubles. You know. Um, so that's just going to help everybody else because, again, like you mentioned, like Jay just mentioned, he has been passing. He was getting better at passing and finding people. And that comes with watching film, which he just admitted that he started doing more, you know. Um, so I'm I'm pretty sure not being able to run, not being able to do anything, that baby just watching film, um, trying to figure out his spots right now and, and how he can help the team. Mm -hmm. um, also, when they, they're trying to blitz, blitz uh, Brunson, he can be – the I heart or Josh Hart, you know, uh, we see that now one thing that I, I wanted us to do in the, the heat series that we didn't do was just flash somebody to the free throw line. And we, we do that all the time. Now that's a big part of yeah. our, our, our offense. And if we had did anything like that, 
that that I guarantee that Miami series would look a lot different. Yeah. Um, because you 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 break out, you break down the defense from the inside out. So you incorporate instead of I Hart or it being Josh Hart, that being Randall, that's kind of mm. crazy when you think about it. So yeah. uh yeah, I just think he will add and I think he won't try because again, he's seen what it was to be a Batman and the pressure that comes along with it. Now, now you know he he has a Avenger type team, you know. Um, so I don't think he he wants to come in and, and mess that up because if you do, it's, it's you. You see what what it is. You get what I'm saying. You see what it is without without Randall right now and the chemistry and us to finding different ways to win. So if you come in here and disrupt that, it, it can't. It's not. It's not a question of it being a team anymore. Mm -hmm. Agreed. All agreed. Mm -hmm. Good question, Timmy. I thought he was going to call me something harder. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, I'm not going too crazy. Nah. I just, you know, I like the, I like when we're, this team is moving the ball so much. We're averaging 30 assists and it doesn't look like it's hard right now. And then I feel like that shooting rhythm that we're getting from the ball movement, our shooting has improved over the past couple of games too. Um, but I definitely see with Julius Randle when we go into a playoff mode where the game slows down a little bit. Being able to have somebody who can work in isolation outside of Brunson is going to be awesome. Yeah. Um. I also think with OG, man, like OG just makes the game really simple out there on the floor with them. Like it's hard not to be able to be able to play with somebody like that. Um. It's an open outlet for Julius when he gets on that block. It's an open outlet that can cut off of Brunson when he's getting into the lane. Like he's just like that dude is like catch up, bro. Like put him on everything. <laughs> yeah. Frank's red hot, bro. He out here, but um, yeah, man. I... <laughs> you, no diddy, no diddy. <laughs> you, you you know what? Too you know you know what I'll say. You know what? No, I still I haven't seen a lot of it. Thank God, I've only seen like one or two comments. But just the fact that I I just read it just bothered me. Like, there's a couple people who said that they feel like the Knicks are better without Randall. Bruh. And I want to say they are might be better defensively. Yes. <laughs> without yes. Randall, but that's different than being better without Randall. Agreed. <laughs> because you still need you still need offense. <laughs> you still you still need offense. And I think it's it's been amazing what Jalen Brunson has done because he's elevated his game to another level, to the fact where you don't really feel that lack of offense, um, as much with Julius Randle out. You mostly only feel it when Jalen Brunson sits. <laughs> then you're like, wait a minute, oh wait, we we are missing another offensive big threat somewhere. That's when that's when you really start to notice it. But you know. Having another playmaker here uh, is still uh, is still a need for us. So, and we're really great right now. But having somebody who can play make even if even if it's not at the level of Jalen Brunson, it is still viable. And to me, that Randall is still viable, even with sure. better defense. Yeah, think, you might you might have to put me on a broad pick, man. I I don't think that we're better without Julius. But I do think we have an undefined ceiling for what this team can and won't be with and without him. Because the way that players are used when Brunson is on the floor, we're maximizing players that didn't get an opportunity to, to see these same looks. And I don't know if we get that same opportunity with Julius out there. Meaning, I mean, if these players aren't able to operate in their full capacity, I'm, I'm not even sure if we can reach the offensive potential that we've gotten to at this point. Well, that's, that's different from... Randall was not good for this team because sometimes like necessity, necessity sometimes helps you grow. You know what I mean? So because we don't have Randall, you're able to try other things and be able to grow from that. But that doesn't mean that you can't then learn, use what you've learned with the other force that you have waiting. You know what I mean? So like, I, I, I kind of like, yes, I do feel like we learn new things because of that injury. But I think that's what happens, not even with the Knicks, that happens with a lot of teams. Like, I, I, I remember the Phoenix Suns 
in that bubble year, I feel like there was a there was injuries was happening to that Phoenix Funds in that bubble year, and they found out. Wait, this person is actually good. We should bring this person back. He can actually shoot corner threes. I didn't know he could shoot corner threes before. Like that's what happens <laughs> with teams who get injured. Sometimes you find that diamond in the rough, and you plug him in next year, and now your your team is even better. And I think that that's what can happen for us. I I think I think losing Randall made Tibbs a better coach. Facts. I think mm. that without losing Randall, we're not here because Tibbs is just going to go to what he knows, go to his go-to, just put Randall and Brunson out there and let them work. Um, mm. I, I think it's made him evolve and, and grow, even in his old age. You know, we've been talking about an old dog and new tricks, but I think losing Randall made that old dog have to learn new tricks, and that was the turnaround of our season, I believe. And... Yo, shout out to, to Raw, actually, because I saw him said this a long time ago. He said he feels like, he said Tibbs coaches his best when, like, things are going wrong. <laughs> like, he said, I remember him saying that, like, a long time ago. He's like, when players are down and stuff, that's when Tibbs coaches his best. And, like, even you think about it back to the, the, the Detroit, to the, the Bulls days, nobody knew, nobody knew Joaquin Noah could pass the ball until Derrick Rose got hurt. So, you know what I mean? So it, it's happening with us again. It's happening. It's happening with us again. So we here right now because times, Jay, huh? How many times I asked y'all? Can we add some movement? Can we just this, put some this, old yeah. school screens? Mm -hmm. Can can we cut? Can we remember, cut? Remember that? Can, can we cut? Please, can we... please, move the hey, ball, yo, please. Poor Quentin Grimes, man. Poor Quentin Grimes. Exactly. That man would have survived out here, man. If the offense looked like this, man. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's crazy. Easy peasy. And RJ, RJ too. Yeah, he could have hit off with some of this movement too. Definitely. Most definitely. The cutting of, of of Dante and Josh that that could have been RJ cutting to the rim going that's that's what he wants to do, that's what he wants to do. So like the again losing Julius made made uh Tibbs put all this into play. So uh, you know again I have been calling this before too. I had said that may just maybe these injuries could be a blessing in disguise because. Like what you see, you force other people to do things, and, and last year we were we were healthy the whole season and got got injured in the playoffs. So I was hoping it was the reverse this year. <laughs> you know, we had the the injury issues throughout the season. We learned to adjust, and then we'd be healthy during the playoffs. Right. So we far, did. I do. My bad, my bad, y'all. I didn't mean to cut y'all off. No, nah, I'm good. Bad. I'm done. I, just like huh. all right. Yo, no um, I just I, I'm I'm gonna get off of here in a second so we can get some more fans on. I want to give a shout out to the chat, chat yo. Give a shout out to all of y'all, and um, I want to make a public apology, yo, to uh, I'm gonna go J Cole on y'all for a second. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> make a public apology, yo, to to my guy uh Ryan G, yo, because I was one of the proponents that was like, yo. I got to get my man Alec Burks out here, yo. Alec Burks is going to come out here and kill, yo. Alec <laughs> Burks is... <laughs> Bruh. I'm, I'm sharing it like, with you, yo, man. I'm sharing it with you. Yo, man. like, I look at Burks get on the court every day, and I'm just like, yo, like, dog, it, is it even worth the cap space now? Like, <laughs> I, I can't even look at this. He's no expiring. More, but, it's fine. He's expiring. He's just going to oh, blow it in the wind. Man. It's cool. <laughs> how did this happen, bro? Did you see how he looked before the trade deadline? Yo, he dropped thirty before the trade he was deadline. <laughs> we got catfished, man. We got catfished. Like Forty five percent killing it. Left he was killing it. Yeah, I got Crazy. caught up in the loser, the, the, as my dad called it, the scrub fest. He was going ham on the scrub fest, Detroit Pistons, <laughs> and y'all thought smoke. That thought that was going to translate. But he no, was no, decent no. when he was a Nick. The, you know, like he was a super scrub when he it. was a Nick. He 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 he, he just fell off. Man. He fell off. The, the loser that took off over him. <laughs> he fell oh off, God. rolled into a ditch, and died. Man. He fell off. <laughs> Hey, uh, salute y'all. I'm gonna catch y'all later, man. Take it easy, y'all. Salute, right. salute to our guys. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah. Appreciate right. you. I, I, I did have one question though. Um, what, what's up with Precious? Uh, like, is there is his role just changing, or is it? It's definitely role it, changing. I think it's a it's, it's matchup with Precious because of because of like he can't guard the Przingis's. He can't guard the the Sabonis. Like if you can shoot over him. 
then it's a bad matchup for him. Like, if you can shoot and you're taller and you can do it over him, it's a bad matchup. His matchups come when we play teams like Boston, which I kind of thought we were going to do. Yeah. I thought that he we would see some pressures during Boston, and, and we did. Like him guarding the Tatums of the world, the Boncheros of the world. That's when we see pressures is worth, I think, more. Exactly. Um, and then yeah. we're kind of trying like to – Like players like Claxton, no. Like like that, that big center, no, we can't do it. Yeah, you but, can't uh, do it. You, you definitely can't do it. He's very specific the way we you have to kind of use him. Um, mm-hmm. And he already knows he has to work on his shooting. The shooting is really going to keep him on the court because because of his size. Like if um, if he can hit the shot, hit that three, that corner three, he'll he'll have a good career because he can defend and he can guard those tweeners, those power forward wing guys. Fine, you can make a lot of money being a three and D dude, but um, yeah. it definitely the change of role. For sure. And you can tell like when he was getting more minutes, he had the freedom to make mistakes. Like sometimes he'll do a move and it looks really clunky. Yeah. And he'll fall and he'll get his timing wrong. And sometimes he'll do a move and it'll look good. Um, so he's not always fluid. So he he needs he needs the minute to to get a rhythm to do a lot of those things, in my opinion. I think there'll be a series where he's going to be very key. It might, and it might be Boston or it might be Milwaukee that we play that has someone that would require his length uh, and p- being able to pair him with iHeart. I think is very key as well. Mitch coming back to some of his minutes. It showed just how dominant Mitchell Robinson was, even at 50, 60% compared to precious in guard in the post and rim protection. But to me, the number one reason is Bojan finally hitting a shot him going from bum to playable in the rotation, I think was absolutely key in Precious minutes is decreasing. And Bojan has been given at least effort on defense. He really always has, but it's been a little more smart. Uh, and I think it's, he's getting a lot of help from Mitchell Robinson, OG2 being paired with, but his shots going in, especially from three, it, he just, a, he's a better weapon than Precious is offensively. Yeah. And because we don't have like another real offensive focus here, like we kind of have to, we have to rely on Bojan. Like we really just don't have a choice, because as good as Precious is, and even though he's been better than Bojan uh, for at least the first part of the season, like to really make some noise in the playoffs, we need another semi engine outside of Brunson. Like mm-hmm. there's just no way to go. There's just no way of getting around it. <laughs> so uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we we. And luckily, he he's starting to respond a little bit. He's, he's I think if, if, hmm? if Randall was healthy, if Randall was healthy, Bojan would be playing at all, and Precious would. Yeah. I, can... uh, I think they would still try to pair Randall and, and Bogey next to each other every once in a while. Like when when he has the capability to shoot the way he is, uh, the way he can, it's just like let me see what he got today. You know, <laughs> I, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I haven't seen Tips confident putting him at the three. He's almost primarily or exclusively at the four when he's in there. So if Randall's in there, I don't see Tips playing Randall with small ball five. So I don't know if that combination would be frequent because if you put Bo- Boji on the perimeter, he's going to get cut. I'm, oh, that, guy's, I'm, I'm, that I'm guy was moving that. his puppies today. He was moving them things. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm gonna I'm quote trying. Steve Nova. I'm gonna quote uh, who's our guy Steve in the chat? Why don't we play Randall at the three? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of I, 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 I'm good with Randall being bully boy Randall. I'd yeah, rather him too. play there. But if, if again, I think this injury it, it, it makes him a better shooter. I think he comes back on the fourth seed type of shooting when he does come back because he he can shoot. You know he can't he can't shoot. It's it's his other 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 hand kind of thing, other arm. I agree. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. I feel like any anybody want to mention anything else? I feel like we talked about. Let, let me see who I feel like we missed. We forgot somebody. I don't know who it was. Let me see. Uh, we talked Dante. Oh, I wanted to say shout out to Dante not living and dying by threes. I'm seeing him. I remember in the beginning of the season we were saying he was allergic to layups. And yeah. Stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, he's finishing better. <laughs> he's definitely finishing better around the ring. Right, yeah, that, that was it. Cool, cool. He, he seemed to he seemed to have an asthma pump. 
Yeah, he's finishing right, right around the rim. <laughs> I think he's like top. Is he like top seven in deflections or something? Yeah, yes. I don't even mention about him program. needing to be uh, mentioned in MIP, and the fact that he's not is crazy. It is crazy. It is. There's a lot of awards that can go around when the Knicks finish second in the East. <laughs> you can you can go. That means somebody has to get something. Damn it. Somebody has, if your if your team is second in the East, somebody has to get defensive player, MVP, All NBA, most improved like. Coach of the year, like something. You can't be second to East and get nothing. That's just crazy. To me, the most deserving is Tom Thibodeau, coach of the year. That to me is the most deserving. Managing all these injuries, especially Randall going down and then doing the flexibility that you need to to stay the second or third seed. That's commendable. Agreed. Right. Agreed. Agreed. I, I, I know. I know everybody. I, 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 I'm not a big Tibbs fan. Y'all know that. Y'all know I have my criticism about about him. But the coach of the year, when you think about what a coach does and the coach, you know, what you, what you want your coach to do, um, I, I don't know another coach this year who's had to go through more adversity with his team than Tibbs and still be in the second and third seed. How can you not think of him a coach of the year, you know, um, like Minnesota, they 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 lost Cat at the end of the year. You know they did, but they get him back. He's he can he's coming back, right? Kitty Cat coming back, and and they have they have Anthony Edwards and Rudy Gobert still, and Mike Conley. Like they still they still have those people. Whereas the Knicks lost sometimes their whole starting five in one game. Remember it was everybody yeah. was mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> then to still be second and third, how can you not? Like in the same thing, that MVP conversation, Listen. it needs to be. We need to have some rules revamped. You need to let me know what an MVP is, because if it ain't Brunson, I don't know. I'm seeing KD and Booker who play on the same team and they still struggling. Like they they coming on now, but they play on the same team, and, and we're not talking about Phoenix as a powerhouse. Well, nobody's complaining. scared. You get what I'm saying? Nobody's, nobody's scared, scared of Phoenix. Of Phoenix. Nobody. Phoenix. So how they get two people on there? And then you talk about AD and the struggling Lakers. Come on. Come legacy. On. Legacy picks, yo. Legacy Come picks. on. So basically, this is like a pre-pick award already. All the people you thought were supposed to be on that list are still there. Absolutely. Jason, like, come on. Yo, just And just, just the fact that Jason Tatum plays with Przingis, Drew Holiday, Jalen Brown, and you got him up there like number three, number four? Let, Come on. Just just, Come on. just to put certain things in perspective too, Ebony. Jalen Brunson at right now is top four in the league in scoring. You want to know what the top five plus minus getters are? This is crazy. Number one, top five net rating, Jalen Brunson. Mm. 473 plus 473. Number two. Nikola Jokic, <laughs> plus 379. So he clips him by 100, which is crazy. This is crazy. Crazy. And I, and I feel like Jalen Brunson just went on a tear in the last two months and just leaped for everybody. Um, number three, Jason Tatum at 348. Number four, OG Ananobi at 341. Number five, Isaiah Hardstein mm. <laughs> at 326. So the Knicks have three players. Top five in that rating. Shout out to the Knicks. We, I'm jumping out the window with that this one. That seems jumping like, out the dog, with this one. that seems like a, that seems like the C word. <laughs> It seems like a C word team, yo. Join us, Jay. J- join <laughs> Ebony and I. a crazy stat. <laughs> Get the, the Dave Chappelle hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's a crazy stat. Five players, three of your starters, top five plus. That's crazy. For Jalen Brunson, MVP, doing what you need to do in order for your team to still win is like the most basic principle that I look at when it comes to MVP. And when Randall went down, he had to increase every part of his game. He had to be the, he had to handle all the double teams. He had to handle an increased level of trapping and blitzing. 
He had to be the playmaker. He had to start playing more defense, and he started having to play more minutes, more on ball, more high usage. Guarded by the best now, the best defender every game, where sometimes the best defender would switch, maybe on Randall, maybe on Brunson. Now he's seen the best defender every game. And when Randall went down, he his scoring went through the roof, and his assists have went through the roof as well. So to me, that's the best case that I've seen in the NBA for an MVP candidate is Jalen Brunson. Him and Tibbs deserve both. Also, Jalen Brunson has gotten better throughout the year. So he, he started off the year great. You, Oh, you have Halliburton starting the year great. But once you get into the next game, you're going to get to play that on you. His numbers have gone up. Mm. Mm. He got that lead in two years. He got that lead in two years. He got that lead in two years. They figured you out. They tried to shut you down. But he's actually gotten better throughout the year. Halliburton went from historic season to. I'm not even sure if he's going to be all NBA. You know, it might be third team all NBA. He shouldn't. It, it looked like his MVP was the All Star game. That was his main goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> shout, sh- shout out to Wally Zerbiak. <laughs> Damn, we spanned the block. <laughs> Listen, I never forgot. I never forgot. <laughs> I remember last year. I, I think I might have. I was. I was the one. I was, last year. I was like, I stand with Wally. <laughs> I don't remember last year on Twitter. I was like, I stay with Wally. <laughs> my man needs to hire. Even when he apologized, apologize. I was like, Why don't apologize? Don't my apologize, man Wally. Me, bro. Stand I'm on sorry. Your, I'm with you. I'm I with you. Don't J. Cole, no. Wally. Don't. Don't. That's the first time in the history of, of his life someone said, I stand with Wally. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. He's never heard that before in his life. Maybe, maybe yeah. Maybe, maybe I Rebecca was, Harlow. I'm about to say maybe Rebecca <laughs> might, might have said Rebecca. that once or twice. <laughs> Rebecca's like you're on your own. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, JL is killing me, bro. Oh no! He, listen, they, when he's when he's doing his little pro, when he's doing his play by play stuff, I be sitting him like Wally. What are you saying, dog? That don't even make no sense. <laughs> Oh, that man is a company man. Yeah, that don't even make no Definitely. sense. He be making some. He be making some points that don't be pointing nowhere. <laughs> he said. He said like Doris Burke for, for a minute. You know, you know how Doris will make a turnover sound like like you almost did something good. Like Dad, I need you on my side. <laughs> you know, like she be like Tatum with the turnover, but the the know how to to to, to try that <laughs> to try it. <laughs> Yo, Doris. Yeah, man. Doris oh, is man. like secretly part owner of the Celtics. I'm convinced. Oh, man. <laughs> or, or Jimmy Butler. She loves her some Jimmy yeah. Butler, too. That's a fact. Jeez. Yeah. But I stand with you, Wally. And I think I got that stock from Tommy Beer. I'm pretty sure I got that stock, stock from Tommy Beer. Shout, Shout out, out to Tommy, Tommy Beer. Beer. Oh, man. <laughs> Yo, 96 in the chat. My bad. I haven't even addressed the chat. He got 96 in the chat. Uh, after I, winning I over the Brooklyn you. paint jobs. Salute to you guys. Also, <laughs> shout out to John Baines. Yeah. Shout out to John oh, Baines. John Baines. Yeah. My guy. 499 Super Chat, man. <laughs> shout out to John Baines. <laughs> League on Super Saiyan over here. Who says, <laughs> Maz pick finally conveyed is looking like the 25th pick. We got quickly and grinds for the 25th. Feeling confident. Leon works his magic. All right. We got, listen, we got a pick. It'll be picked or shopped. You already know how the Knicks do. We got like two picks this year or three picks. I don't even know. <laughs> two. two. Two picks. We got two picks this 25th. season. Maz will um, be 25th. I, I'm still, I'll still be shocked if we actually draft somebody. If we do, we do. I, I hope we, we do. Will. I do too. I, I do. hope we do too. UConn has a lot of good pl- good players in draft this year. So. Yeah, yeah. You just plug and play. You just need somebody exactly. to play. Yeah, we, need, we just we, we yeah. need a win. We oh, need, we need a playmaker. Mm-hmm. A defensive wing playmaker. Not for nothing. You know who 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 kind of fit our way in life? And, and, and it's funny. It's Bronny. 
I was saying that. No. I'm not <laughs> even. Make a video not on a, it. Like, like, yeah. I, I'm not. A I understand big what you're saying. Fan. Yeah, I'm not a Le- LeBron fan. We could take Bronny without him. Like, I don't. You want already, to you already to know he's gonna, us. man. But, 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 like the way of life, like just the late pick and somebody that 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 defines, shoots threes, like, plays great yeah, defense, deep defense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. So yeah, Bron- Bronny went to what transfer portal. And the, the glare, so yes. So if he ain't he, if he ain't going where he want to go, like I think if you're a second round pick, you you can uh, actually you know what yes declare. So that's one of those weird things. But um, I I think Nick's a good place. I think we have the coach who appreciates defense. Not not mm-hmm. many coaches actually appreciate defense. It's like if you ain't giving me 15 points, a lot of coaches like you ain't playing. But I think with Tibbs, like if you're a good defender, you can you can find yourself a rotation piece. And I think that's pretty much what he wants. I oh, think we, it's time for Roka Stroka Bias to come home in New York. We need that's that what backup playmaking. Come uh, need, home, Rokas. Come on, Rokas. You, you skipped us when mm-hmm. we were shitty. Now we're good. Now it's time for you to come over and get that 12 man's game. There you go. Mm-hmm. And he skipped us because he said he didn't want to come over here and and, and not play. So this is perfect. He will play. Like we yep. need another 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 playmaker off that bench. Um, him and, and, and McBride has showed he can play on ball or off ball now. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm with the I'm with the the Deuce uh, Rokis backcourt off the bench. I'm with it. Same. I, 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 you know, free is me. I'm free is me. I'm not, me. I'm, not I'm not looking at PG. I'm not looking at none of them. We ain't drafting it. Ain't in house. I don't care. Like free I really is don't. Me. Free is me. I'm just <laughs> letting you guys know. Hell yeah, I need that hat. We got 600 <laughs> draft picks and Bojan to trade. I would be shocked <laughs> if we didn't use any of these picks and Bojan or something. Absolutely shocked. I just, I just don't see a scenario where that does, where that happens. If we win the chip, we get to the finals. You we we get to happens? the finals. If, if yeah, that's what I'm I think, I think win. if we get Eastern Conference Finals, I think this team comes back. It's minus yes. the Alec Burks and things of that Facts. nature. I agree. I think, I, I think, think this even team if we get to the Eastern back. Conference Finals. Depending on the price tag, we still just have too many picks, yo. Like, <laughs> like I feel like something something has to be consolidated or something. Yeah, I, I get what you mean, but I think with the picks, we you you understand with the New York Knicks, every time we get close, they change the rules. So I think I think with the picks, we was collecting them, collecting them, trying to do like a Rudy Gobert type of deal, and then like this apron thing kind of acts that. So now we're like, all right, we got these picks. We don't have to be desperate. Like, we'll move when we move it kind of thing. That's what I think. I think that we were collecting picks from the get-go because we were trying to make a move like they did when we go bit. But know then what? they changed the, the rules on us. So <laughs> now, now it's like, you know, we could either pick them or, or trade them. But I think all of that is answered after this, uh, by this playoffs, rather. What's crazy is that it could be the deal that, that Leon Mates and said Gobert could be Bodie, the 25th, the 27th for the 14th pick. It could be something like that, where we move down. Instead of drafting two guys, we draft one, we dump the salary in, in Bodie, and then we take someone who's a perfect fit at 14, 3 and D, who comes in shooting 38% and can defend a 2-4. through four. I just that's, don't a, see, that's a possibility. I don't see, I don't see us giving up Bogey for... A guy who had never played a minute in the NBA. Not the way our team is constructed. Like I feel like if we're giving up Bogey, we're gonna give we're gonna get a veteran who can contribute because we're we're like contending status. You know what I'm saying? Like I believe in this team so so much, y'all, that I don't even know who a free agent next year. Like like I didn't even look. I haven't looked. I I I haven't looked to see who's available. I'm sure Fritz has looked. (laughs) <laughs> I know he does. He has. I know he got so, it memorized. So, 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 so Fritz is it? It's not any, a lot. Not it's not like a lot. But the, the thing is, like, pl- the plug and play. The thing is, we're not. The Knicks aren't trying to sign free agents. We're trying to trade. No, trying to trade for people. I think I think there's gonna be a lot of movement. 
I think there's just some teams are just going to, there's going to be a lot of movement this year. So, but yeah, you don't, I don't think we're just like sitting on a free agent. Yeah, I don't like free players don't even become free agents anymore. Like players, players get traded. Players don't become free agents anymore. When's the last time the last mm -hmm. big free agency was the, the Kevin Durant, um, Kyrie Irving year? After that, mm -hmm. all the big name players were traded. Like free agency is pretty much dead because everybody gets their money. Yeah. Um, everybody just gets their money with the team and then requests a trade later. <laughs> Shout out to Nick Nation. Shout out to Nick Nation TV because that Herb Jones, that's that is my guy. That is who I want. And that's who I've been talking about for a long You know, when we said trade deadline, it was murmurs. And I'm like, hold on, if we can get him. Hey, OG Light, man. That's what I'm give me somebody who can play some defense, elite defense, and hit some threes. I'm with it. That's some that's somebody OG. Baby OG. Herb Jones is a bit like a baby OG. You know? That's what I'm saying. I, I'm with that all the time. Anybody play defense, y'all know. Frank had me fooled. But anybody that plays defense, <laughs> I'm, I'm supportive of. You know? So, yeah, I, I with her. Frank had us a lot. Frank had a lot of us fooled, man. Frank had a lot I, of us I was wrong. I was wrong about Frank. I was wrong about the babies being here still. Because, like, we, we 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 down to two. Um, <laughs> I was... I was that was the the off the my off takes and uh tips if he continue see what we uh we see in the playoffs mm -hmm. but, but but if he continues definitely but tips I was a little hard on him because I apologized already and he made me regret my apology so so I'm 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 gonna wait I'm gonna wait everybody still year. hurt it's cool yeah I am I'm hurt. I got PTSD <laughs> it's, I it's am. trauma it's trauma. Love yeah, him and Randall. I apologize to both of them. They had bad season right after. Yo, that trauma. All right. Yo, <laughs> salute to the chat, man. 198 people in the chat. If you're liking the show, if you're liking the conversation, hit that like and subscribe. We're here after every Nick game talking Nick's basketball. And season's almost over, damn it. And if you didn't know, this is Fan Friday. So usually we, that's why Fritz is sitting here with us if you've been here before. Before, um, before Pick for Team was sitting here with us chatting it up. Nick Nader was supposed to be here. I don't know what happened. I don't know if his phone Nick died. Nick Nader probably still partying knowing him. Yeah. He's <laughs> he might be he might be trolling his brother who's a Nets fan. Facts. <laughs> Facts. But I, I do the plugging in because cause he's he's my guy. That's my guy. Nick and Nader's having having a, a, a watch party of during before uh the game against Chicago. At the Bronx Ale House again. I don't remember the the address, but it's the Bronx Ale House. Um, anybody wanted to uh Nick fans, you want to want to watch the game by yourself or whatever have you want to watch other Nick fans come through. It's also uh like an after party event, after after party event. Also again, Chef Chef John on on Twitter, who's also a big part of the Nick communities, having something uh for Nick fans. So. That's, that's in up. Queens. So depending on where you at, you know, you mm -hmm. can come to you come to Nick and Nader for the game, and afterwards you you can go chill with Chef John. That that's what's up. That's what's up. Definitely. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. Good show, guys. Nick's right now as it stands. We are wait, we still have. I'm sorry. We still even haven't mentioned that we won game away from the fifty burger. That's crazy. How we haven't mentioned that the whole time. We won game uh, away from the 50 burger. See the gunshots in my head just now. I'm yeah. Like, oh. One game away from the 50 <laughs> burger. With the last Back. win, we have locked down the third seed. And if we win against the Bulls and the Bucks lose, we get the second seed. And we will most likely be matched up with either the 76ers or the Pacers, probably. I'm thinking. That's what it's looking like at this moment. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's gonna happen. We'll see what's gonna happen after the game on Sunday. Jay, Jay you know what song remind me of the Knicks and the league, and when it comes come to the rest of the league and how they feel about us. You wanna hear? What's, what's, you know, what's, what's we song? don't want them problems, problems. <laughs> We don't want them problems with them. <laughs> that, that, that's the song that makes me. That's that is what I think of when I think of this team. The Lean back, Fat Joe. Yes, the 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 
the the league is in trouble. Yeah. They really are. Speaking of lean back, Fat Joe, what's up for bruh picks? Bruh. <laughs> I got clip. But, I got a whole clip. Yeah, yo. For those who don't realize and who don't know, bruh picks are usually the worst plays of the game. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes uh, it's not even the game. It could be this game. It could be another game. Uh, and sometimes it used to be something stupid, something dumb, something idiotic that happened that you just want to point out. And this is stupid. This is dumb. This is idiotic. So let's get to it. All right. It seems like Ebony has some bruh picks. Yeah, I got some bruh picks in honor. My guy who wasn't feeling good. I know life be life. And so yeah, shout I'll, out take, I'll take the, yes, I'll be, I'll take the rings. Um, the first is, is I just seen a rapper got acquitted today. Um, he got acquitted. I mean, not acquitted. He got charged because he killed his barber, y'all. What? He killed his barber. Okay, he he killed his barber right after he did a he got a cut. He did like a uh you know how they got they have the mic hanging from the air kind of vibes, and then they they spit in. So he got bullied so much about his haircut. That uh, his name is a uh, superstar pride. You can look it up. He he uh got, got so, so mad about people talking about his haircut that he went back to his barber and killed. Wow, literally. Bruh. So yes, that that. So like the barber been. like, beat them he or had, something. He had like a uh, I don't know if it was a a Zeke and he kind of tried to change it into a different haircut kind of thing. But his name is Super, Superstar's Pride. He had like a, a regular haircut here and like a fro in the back. So it, it was a weird, it was a very oh, weird man. cut. It was. So I don't know if he tried to say, yo, I messed it up, but I'm going to hook you up kind of thing. I don't yeah. know what it is. But the fact of the matter was both of them were friends. And like the aunt actually said they were kind of like brothers type of thing. What? Because she was in the house or grandma, aunt, one of the family members was in the house when it happened. He came to his house and chased him outside with a gun and, and, and did what he did. That's a little extreme. Yeah, yeah, wow. That's what, people, people, it ain't worth it. It's not worth it. People going to talk regardless. They going to talk if you got a nice haircut. They going to talk if you got a bad haircut. People just going to talk. My mama taught me that in third grade. Just be you because people always going to talk. They will. You can't talk please about everybody. Mama. Exactly. <laughs> you can't please everybody. But uh, my battery going dead, y'all. Sorry. Y'all know how I do. Yeah. Um, yeah that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, so that that's my first bro pick of the day. It's, it's superstar pride. Y'all can check out the story. Yeah, my, well, well, you well, you, why you setting up my bro pick? My brother, it's, my bro pick goes to Fat Joe, right? Okay, <laughs> bro. What did what Fat Joe say? He was on. He was on uh, Jalen Brunson's podcast. Okay, yes, I seen part of it. I ain't watched. And home, Fat Joe, if you guys don't know, he tells great stories, yes. elaborate stuff. Sometimes the stories are so grand that they might be unbelievable. <laughs> he told a story about how Kevin Durant was playing basketball at Rucker Park and he was shooting so well. He was shooting from like half court from three and he's playing so well that that the, the people there got mad and they chased him out the park and he had to run away into a truck. And they posted that clip online and KD responded, that's cat. <laughs> that never <laughs> happened. Bruh. <laughs> so, I mean, man, Fat Joe tells amazing stories, but. He be on his LeBron. He be putting some sauce on that. <laughs> he be on his LeBron. LeBron got caught talking about he great at chess. He never played chess. He don't know how to play chess. Yeah, it's a great, great book. Chess. Whatever, whatever. What's LeBron? the book about? Well. It tells us it's, it's an untold story about a man who he dives deep into his mind and finds himself. It's like, oh, that's great. <laughs> I, I, I got, I'm ready. I got the clip loaded. Okay, what you got? You heard it. You heard it. Uh, Angel Reese haters. Angel Reese haters. I've heard this. This is not even the race part. I, I'm done with that. Well, until Liberty season comes, because I'm ready for it. I already know it's, it's there. But um. Angel Reese, they, 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 people have called her, said that she, she's not even a lottery pick. They've said that, you know, she won't do anything in the WNBA. She has no offensive bag Damn. and things of that nature. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's the, the narratives around Angel Reese. And that may be her post game could, she can hone her offensive skills. That's true. You know, anybody can. You can add to your game. 
But what people don't know is that everybody, like the summer, one summer or one off season can make a difference for a player. Like, so you can never say the player, it, it, it capped. Because if their work ethic is there and they have a heart, like I know Angel Reese does, because you don't, you don't, you can't, her crown is heavy, like she says. She gets a lot of hate for no reason, for, for being her, for talking junk and playing the game with passion. That's what you want. Um, You can't teach that in gyms. So once you have that, you can forever be successful if you have the work ethic behind it. Mm. And today she's, you know, she's in New York because the draft is on Monday. And she's working with Chris Brinkley, nailing the threes, consecutive threes, like one after another, cash, cash, cash. And and that's going to help whatever team she get on to, because there are some great bigs. There are some great big rim protectors. If I can remove you from the rim, then I've done my job for my team. Right. So like she, that tells you in yourself, the, like they, like a, a Twitter person said about Mamba mentality, that, that shows you that. Like you cannot teach heart. Once a, a player shows you they have that, and they have work ethic, like that sky's the limit for that play. So I already know that it's going to be a lot of apology forms for Angel Reese. And shout out to the young queen because you shouldn't be hating on kids anyway. Come on, come on. true. Like come on, bro. Anyway, yes. And I got I sent the the text. Uh, I sent it to the chat. Um, Jay of my post of the next the next uh. Oh, um, so I don't know if you want to show show folks my my comparison because Coach Timon got it. <laughs> oh, oh, it's it's a, it's a, it's an image. Hold on. Yes, Coach Meerkat. Yes, and his fans and his players. It's like a whole loser mentality that just trickled down. My coach would never. My coach would never make those those type of comments. Your players, you threw literally everything at Jalen Brunson but the kitchen sink. Everything. He had Drew on him. He had Jalen. He had Tatum. Y'all was pressing him full court. He blew by the press to, to run into Tatum and score, do whatever he wanted to do. Y'all tried. Y'all tried for three quarters and tried to save face. If you wasn't going to try, you would have sat them like you sat Persingas and Al Horford the game before. You get what I'm saying? That's not trying. Yeah, I wanted to see how you could rank against a playoff type of team, somebody that plays physical and y'all got exposed. If you can't hit the three, I, I'm not scared of the Boston Celtics. Y'all got literally exposed, and your fans making excuses for it. The Knicks fans fandom would never, would never. So this bro pick goes to the Coach Meerkat, look, the Timon of the that's his <laughs> that's his twin. That is his twin. With the losing mentality and it, the sore losing mentality. They need to go, yes, definitely go to the wigs. They have to go get the get a heart because they got none. They soft. The Bruh. definition is soft. Yo. Like like the the jelly and the donut. That's that's the Boston Celtics. Tom Thibodeau would never go on national television and give excuses no, no. for his team. Not never. Oh, uh, you know, it's hard when you when you have to get up games and then Tom Thibodeau would never. Tom, we were up 30 points and he was screaming at the players about coverages and and going to the quarter and, and guarding the three. Like I I can never be my coach, man. That's that not, mentality not is, is, is already like Mr. Like Salt. It's it's becoming a common theme. Instead of giving us our, our credit, they just rather sound dumb. You get what I'm saying? And I, it, as a media personnel, and you say I hate, I hate, oh, that 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 probably rolls it right into my next bro pick, I guess. I hate uh to say this, but the Knicks are good. Why the fuck do you hate to say that? I'm sorry. Look, look, you Bruh. see how that got me mad? Yeah, why, nah, why, that was crazy. Why, why that, would you that was hate crazy. To say the that? hate it was oozing out there, pores. Like he looked down. I hate to say this, but the Knicks are the second best team in the NBA. And then turn around and say that they would lose to the Pacers. Bruh. Crazy. Facts. Facts on facts. So Coach Meerkat, that's some loser ass mentality. Like that, that not like you and like Charles Barkley has said, you can't turn it on and turn it off. Yeah, soft in the middle. And, and he spoke 
He spoke like like they won championships back to back to back. Y'all underachieved every year. Every year, y'all was supposed to be the it. Y'all supposed to win. The, the Tatum, Jalen thing was supposed to go. You had Steph sit you down. You get what I'm saying? Shows you up in your own place. Like, they so... I, I'm, after this game, I know it's a, a regular season game, but again, we win ugly games. If you take away one weapon, we can find other ways to impact the game. If you take away the Boston Celtics three-pointer, they're lost. They're lost. KP is just a big guard. He getting locked up in the post by the De, De, De Vincenzo. <laughs> He's a big guard. You a big guard. He is what I was mad about Julius with years ago. You understand? I felt he was a big guard. You're not a power forward right now. You you dancing on the perimeter. You a big guard. Uh, that's what KP is. Unicorn my ass. He got no post game. My man. Bruh. And then and then fans make an excuse, get the bruh too. Do, do the bruh. Bruh. Boston. Get the car keys and the car keys. I got my car keys and the car keys. <laughs> <laughs> Worst oh, accident. Oh, my ringtone. <laughs> Worst accident in the world. I left my car keys and the car keys. Oh, you don't even know what he's saying. Car keys and car keys saying the same. They sound the same. Oh man, that's that's how I feel about that. And KP's TNT. no unicorn; he's a pony. I used to say that. Exactly, he's a pony. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy still up. Still a good one. Uh, I got I got a uh, TNT because it must be in their contract that they have to hate on the Knicks. Like, just sound dumb and hate. Like that's what they said. Mm. Don't 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 speak facts on the Knicks. Just sound dumb and hate. That they that has to be in the contract. That's a Kenny fact. Smith, Kenny Smith. I don't care. You're gonna say that the the what you said about Jalen Brunson the first time and then correct, try to correct yourself now and then say we're going to lose to the Pacers, we're going to lose to the Magic and all that. That's like the girl who had the, I don't know if you've seen it in Twitter, she, it was this, this video and she was talking about her favorite artist, but basically she said her favorite artist was J. Cole and then when they put J. Cole against somebody else, she said that that rapper was better and then when she said when they that rapper went against somebody else, she said the other rapper was better. So it wasn't making no sense. You said J. Cole was the best. So how did how did you get here? Like that that's how TNT was. Like, come on, the math is not math. And if you the best, how the hell is he losing to somebody who's been struggling since he won his MVP, meaning the All Star Game uh, starter? Yeah, that that is, was his man. plan. It is. It is. Yeah. So T so TNT, screw you. That's why we're here, because we're going to cover the Knicks like they're supposed to be covered. Thank yeah. you very much for allowing us to be here. Because gotcha. right. y'all right. suck. <laughs> All right. Y'all suck. Bruh. Lee, okay. any bruh picks? I got oh, one bruh pick. I still got, I got the clip. Oh, oh damn. You <laughs> got the Uzi. <laughs> the people calling OG Saul. <laughs> Is he still Saul? Is he still Bruh. Saul? My yeah, boy stayed from Harlem. Ass crat Tate, bro. <laughs> yeah, the, the, don't give me the goldie. I'm trying Top to be five nice. Worst takes. I'm trying to be <laughs> nice. I'm trying to be nice. Ass clown material. I'm trying to be nice though. But anyway, <laughs> I'm trying. To That's be my nice. guy. But I'll say it's a dumbass take. <laughs> Ass clown material. I'm trying to be nice. Anyway, Canelo. Al Canelo. Canelo got to be up there. The quack quack master. Quack, quack. My man still talking about Benavidez, talking about how it's not going to help him. The, not fighting Benavidez is not helping you either. You look like you're scared, and you should be, but you look like that. You look like you're trying to protect your legacy to not get another L because er every time you've stepped up to somebody, a challenge, you've lost that. The Mayweather you got your ass spent. Of course, no diddy. The, the Baval fight, you just... <laughs> You bit off more than you can chew. You get what I'm saying? Now, it's somebody that you should fight, and you, you just duck it. Quack, 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 quack. What was... Hold on. I have his his, his, his quote about why he won't fight him now. And and the it's changed every time why he won't fight him. This is the new one. It says, uh, uh, shout out to Michael Benson, who put it, Canelo Alvarez has said that he believes that David Benavidez's fight will be a lose-lose for him with the rehydration clause. When I beat him, they're going to say, oh, they put that clause. If I lose, it's a lose-lose situation. I can fight with any fighter and make good money. 
and I can do whatever I want. I deserve it because I did everything in my career. I deserve it to be in a position and I'm going to do whatever I want. That sounds like I'm scared, I'm scared, and I'm more scared. You didn't do much. You're still not the best. You're not the GOAT. You got spanked when you against the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? I just I don't want to talk about Canelo. He he disappointed me. That man's a quack quack. He's a ducking. Ducking. And what well, hold on? I'm good. I think I'm good now. <laughs> oh, Mavs fans. The Mavs, my, my guys, top ops. The Mavs fans for trying to 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 pacify yourself to believe that getting rid of Jalen Brunson was a real deal. And <laughs> and the fact that you're celebrating that we're, we're we're drafting late in the draft, not knowing that we do very well late in the draft. So thank you again, clown ass Mavs, for 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 tanking, for doing whatever you had to do. Because you're not, we nobody's scared of you. We're not scared of you. And and the fact that they was trying to to uh compare Kyrie and and, and Jalen Brunson already let you know how good Jalen Brunson is. One it should be an MVP contention, and one has. And I'm a Kyrie fan. I love Kyrie fan. I so. love Kyrie, but it's about impact. It's about impact. Yep. It's not always about numbers. And even if you go numbers, JB still has that. Yep. Bruh. You cannot find a way to spin letting an MVP Sorry. caliber player walk out your door for nothing. I don't care what you say. There's Twice. no way you can spin that. Twice. Steve Nash, Jalen Brunson. Oh, it's in your DNA. And he has to stay. And he has to stay. Bruh. You had to trade <laughs> half your team for Kyrie. We yep. just let him walk over here. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know what? We gave, we traded away second round picks. Mm. Kimber Walker. My bad. I guess that was something. <laughs> Mom, and they and don't forget they definitely tried to do the 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 uh, Dallas Knicks once upon a time. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. When they had Reggie Bullock and yeah, <laughs> Tim Hardaway Jr. still there. God bless. Theo Pinson. Theo Pinson. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Courtney Lee. Yeah. Facts, facts, on facts, on facts. Timmy. <laughs> All the buttons. Uh, but yeah, that 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 was my last. That was my last. Uh, uh okay. pick. I'll keep this quick. First pick goes to Ebony and Brutus, your Tate Knicks. Thank you for having me on the space. It was a ton of fun. Oh. Got the shout out. And finally talked to some people I never talked to before. Uh, love Brutus. He's a great dude. The mayor of Knits Twitter. And obviously Ebony the Queen. I think they're a really cool duo. I'm going to try to make sure the TOT is. one. At least one of us are in there hanging out with y'all. And uh, it's, it's chopping it up. It was a great time. Yeah. Uh, another one, Fritz. My man's been on the panel and also moderating the chat at the same time. My boy was a superstar, man. Never forget, <laughs> Fritz, you are the fifth Beatle. KOT team, best mom in the game. You're absolutely one of us. I would love to have you every Friday. Yeah, I hope you don't know how, how important Fritz is. Shout out to Fritz. No Ooh. doubt. And I think it's Destiny great child out this. <laughs> I, I, I love the, the Fritz is to be on, on camera, too, and with, the, with this brand new mic uh, looking fly AF. I would love to have you every Friday, dude. It's just great to have the whole team here at once. Uh, my, my last ooh pick, Nick Yat, my guy, since I joined the, the, <laughs> the, the time <laughs> show, my guy has attacked the way that I look, uh, the way that I dress, uh, my earrings. He thinks that I'm like the leftist Antifa, like Biden loving woke. Like, I don't know what he thinks, but even though I hate all of those things and I'm, I've never, I've never voted for Biden and never will vote for Biden. I am absolutely not a Democrat and I hate the Democrat party. Somehow that I'm like everything he hates wrote into one person, but you know what, brother, I love you. And you're a Nits fan and you're here every episode in KOT uh, in the chat, annoying people, but you're here, you're speaking your piece. And we, appreciate, <laughs> we appreciate every fan that we have. So you're on my OOPIC list. I appreciate you, bro. And if I give you something to make yourself feel better and to roast, then by all means do it because I have my set of bums that I do after on a nightly basis and I'm proud to be one of yours. Mm -hmm. Now my bro pick. Oh. Speaking of MAGA, my bro pick is former um, Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy. But not him. My bro pick's actually Matt Gates. 
<clears throat> the representative from Florida. Kevin McCarthy was interviewed over the weekend. I uh, can't remember what TV station it was, but he said there's only one reason why I'm no longer Speaker of House. It's because of one congressman from Florida who asked me to intervene on an investigation because he had sex with an underage girl. She was 17 at the time. And it's pretty obvious who was the one that filed for a motion for uh, the Speaker of the House to be replaced. Matt Gates. Who's under investigation for having sex with an underage girl? Matt Gates. So Mitch, uh, Kevin McCarthy, pretty much throwing Matt Gates under the bus where he should be and get ran over a few times uh, for essentially raping an underage girl. And yet Matt Gates, you know, protected both sides. Do it. They both protect their own scumbags. He's being protected by Republican Party. There are plenty of Democrats who are being protected by their party. Wow. Uh, Hillary Clinton being one of them. So to me. Uh, he's a great pit in, in this joyous day. Uh, shout out to N- Nitsiak N- N- and the rest of Magda. Your boy Matt Gates is my is my bro pit of the night. Wow, didn't expect that. All right, Matt. Bro, ass clown, ass clown energy. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. How do you talk about that? You don't. <laughs> I got ooh picks too. I got ooh picks. Can we do the ooh? Can we get some good people? Can we get can we sure. get some shout out people? I want to shout out Angel Reese again for working yeah. right after the draft, getting to the gym. You know, I'm, I'm a show. I'm a show letting the hate mm. motivate you. Keep it going, young queen. I'm going to give a shout out to a, a, another a woman in media, uh, Ari Chambers, who was uh, in uh, her, her uh, she's big in, in growing women's sports. She covers volleyball. She covers covers uh, basketball, soccer, anything women's sports, she covers it. And she does it with such grace and style. Um. She's uh, starting a new journey, and whatever that is, uh, I I wish her the luck and best of luck, rather. Uh, Ari Chambers uh, oh. that is where she goes by. And uh, OG for standing up for his guy, letting yes. you know ain't shit soft uh, over here. Oh, yep. And I, I, I was like, <laughs> let's get it. It's a great moment. My moment. type of time. That's my type of time. I was a, I was a type 5'7", looking at 6'4", telling what? What you want to do? Like, <laughs> that was me. What you What you want to do? So I like that type of time. Like, mm. like smack your hands. Definitely, definitely, mm. definitely. <laughs> and Leon Rose, Leon Rose. I've been a fan for a very, very long time. The one criticism I had against Leon Rose was against was it? I I felt earlier he was letting Tibbs do too much. You know, like let him do. Not accountability, like he was letting Tibbs run run amok. I get it. Um, but yeah, just not putting all our eggs in one basket, restoring, restoring the the uh Nick's name, the reputation, not just going for any and every trade. Like you you know, if you hear a rumor, it probably not true because they ain't talking to nobody. <laughs> like, so uh just just the way he's run this, the contracts, everything. I have to shout out Leon Rose. So, yeah, definitely Leon Aww. Rose. Appreciate you. I, I this is a new feeling of not being stuck and still being good. So, yeah, yeah man. Yeah, we're in a great position. Really yeah, this yeah, is that, amazing. That, that that's like it. I'm done. CF finals bound and with a million picks and this is amazing. This is this is nuts. <laughs> it's new. You almost feel like you're dreaming. Yeah, yeah, this is crazy. Great job. And still didn't get any executive of the year votes. I'm not sure if they update that, but I remember looking back a few months ago and he wasn't even mentioned. So Black. very weird. Very weird. Casuals. Maybe they'll update that. He'll get a mention because it's kind of crazy. What he's done with yes. this team, yeah, um, but man, or maybe they're hating because he doesn't do interviews. I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. You don't got to talk to me if this is the result. I'm telling you. I don't That's what I'm what saying. saying. I don't Just care. Just show me what you're saying. Listen, <laughs> freaking Phil Jackson talked too damn much. Yeah, don't talk Ooh. about Phil. Phil, yeah. Phil had me. Phil had me so. Com- That's another wrong one. I was like, if Phil, we trust. I'm, I'm sure. like, he got to yeah, come over here, bro. Yeah, I get a bro pick for that, bro, bro again, Thanks. and Phil he. That's a simp. That's Phil the simp, I call him. And he still didn't end up with the woman. So, like, you just lost all, all around, my guy. Damn. <laughs> oh, man. All right, all right. Empty the clip. All right. That was the show. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the show, hit that like and subscribe. And um, we're here after every game. Last last post game of the season will be on Sunday. So, um, yeah, I'll be here Sunday. Me too.
Mm -hmm. I might be I might be here, but in a loud background. I might be in and out because I'm a you know I'm gonna be in in these these Nick streets All trying right, yeah, to support. yeah. I mean, <laughs> let, let us know what you do if you if you make it. You can come through for a second and, and dip out. That's cool. That's cool. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I'm I'm definitely I'm gonna come through. I'm gonna show out. I'm, I'm, it's a spot What's that, up? that I can I can I can I can film from. So that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, uh, you could catch me here. We 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 at that point, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know where you can find you, Ebony. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> uh, you can catch me here every post game. You can catch me on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Twitch at Mad Nick Fan. I run a, a post game. Me, uh, sorry, a pregame for the Knicks at, at Twitter every every game. I call your take Knicks and shout out to Lee and, and Ryan and, and Jay for coming through for stopping through. Appreciate y'all. Um and and um. I run a post game for the Liberty get uh the Liberty games called Bowling with the Queens with, with my big sis and we we're gonna have a couple of guest uh co-hosts this year and um yeah oh and, and Liberty Latte I, I I it's coming coming soon with um the Morning Bruce crew uh, I'm excited about that uh, growing the game any way so, I can and help so so if you're a Nick fan y'all but you like basketball like you just like basketball like I'm telling you the Liberty play team game they play a team game uh it looks like like Tibbs has borrowed Sandy's uh, playbook recently <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you if you would like if you like a team basketball game yes the Liberty is where is that all right, all right, all right. Yo, I'm signing up I'm signing up this year um WNBA League Pass. It's like thirty five dollars yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, went, so it went, it went up. It went up. It was only it like twenty bucks last year. Yeah, that, it went I, up. I never, I never seen it up there before. I was like, because I get NBA League Pass. That's like mm -hmm. if it, if it was always up there, I would have, I would have signed up. Nah, if, if you guys, if you like mm -hmm. basketball, just like in general at the purest form, like these are, uh, you know, women have to stay all four years so they get developed. You know, you, you, the fundamentals is always there. Like the footwork, it, it, you'll be amazed. I, it's crazy. Like, um, so and, and I know that the they think that Clay, Caitlin Clark is 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 the savior, and she might she's going to help. And I'm not I'm not going to uh, deny that. But it's real dogs in the WNBA. Like Caitlin Clark is not going to be the best player on her team. Kind of dogs, you get what I'm saying? Um, all she's. Right. She's probably gonna be drafted by by a player that uh one of the first rookies to do you know rookie of the year and then make an all star game in Leah Boston since since uh probably like Candace Parker type. Gosh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, Fritz. Yo, know, Fritz, where do you find you, Fritz? Um, uh, yep, you find me on Twitter. Um, Fritz handles. Um, yeah, you can always catch me on there. Um, also have my. YouTube channel. I haven't really been posting, but I'm gonna be doing like the post get post uh post season some post season like coverage. That's but um yes. Yeah. yeah. It's called the NBA economy, so I'll keep y'all posted. Cool, cool, cool. All right. If there's any any Nick related NBA economy, let me know. Maybe we can do some crossover or whatever. All right. All right, cool. Lee, let me know. You know what? I'm gonna give this space a shout out to go follow at your Tate Nits Y O U R T A K E K N I C P A K S. That is Brutus Mayor Brutus on its Twitter and Ebony. They do your Tate Nits every pregame space. It's a blast, and what I love the most about it: very warm and welcoming, and inviting, just at the KOT show. No matter what level of basketball knowledge or Nets fandom you're at, there's a place for you to come and speak your mind, and they're very uh, democratic on who they allow to speak and for how long they speak. Everyone has a, a really nice lawn platform and can really get their take off, uh, express themselves in a really fun, hilarious environment. There's a positive it's Twitter, negative it's Twitter. Everyone's there. Your Tate Nits, don't follow them. Book club time, keep it short. Uh, read this today over coffee. It broke my heart. It's called Stay True by Hua Su. And it's a book about two Asian college kids in the early 2000s, right, uh, right before 9-11, um, they develop a friendship that from one is kind of from a straight laced upper middle class Asian community in California. The other one is kind of a, a punk rocker. He likes indie magazines and, and collecting records and shops at thrift stores, but they become very good friends. And they share great memories over their freshman, sophomore year. And then one of them dies in a car wreck and it sends the other one off into a path of 
figured out what life means. And also he investigates that through writing. And that's the author. It's a memoir about his life growing up in college and losing his best friend at a very early age and how that set him on a path to try to discover who he was in relation to his friend and try to carry on the memory of their friendship in his writing. And the memoir is the investigation of that. It's called Stay True. It was nominated for a Pulitzer. And it's an incredible, I'm sorry, it won the Pulitzer, I believe, last year. And it's an unbelievable memoir. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Lee. You can find us at the KOT show on Twitter, the Nick Time Show on Instagram, and Nick Time Show on Facebook as well. All right. And um, I don't know if I watch X Men 97, but man. Yo. Man. No? Oof. Uh, yes, I'm watching. Oh, Heavy. Man. Last episode. Last episode. Mm-hmm. I was like, no. Nah. It's kind of crazy, though, because they get they getting a new creator, right? Because he has some issues. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah so but he, he did. He finished the second season though. Before oh, okay, okay, he finished the second yeah, so. season. So did he get? Did yeah. he walk away or did he get fired? He got fired. He got fired. <laughs> so why? Oh, did I, he forgot, get fired? I forgot. Yeah, I forgot what it was, but he had some issues. It was I, t- like I can't remember exactly what the issues were, but it, before it even came out, he got fired. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy people yeah. are gonna riot after that because it's come it's 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 good it's really mm-hmm. good so well, i hope whoever they hire can 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 duplicate that or i hope they work it out where they bring homie back how about that yeah <laughs> bring homie back forgive and, and you know he, he was of the the black and, and brown community also oh that means he ain't do it <laughs> I think I, he he might might also have been queer if I'm not mistaken. I, I I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but I mean, those opportunities don't come around very often. He made the best Etzman storyline ever. Like it's better than all the movies, which is incredible. Right, right, man, that's crazy. Well, if you haven't watched the last episode, I don't want to spoil it for you. Go ahead and watch it. It's a it's a it's a movie. <laughs> that's the <a> show. <laughs> I. Before you end up, uh, J. Uh, J. Cole, they, they got his GQ uh, pictures flown around as apology. Uh, like you put, they using his GQ uh, pictures though. When you know the pictures like this, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it like <laughs> <laughs> nah, I definitely been using J. Cole as a punchline like whole weekend, man. I, I posted something on Twitter. I added like I, I added um Shaq and Kenny. He posted a picture of J. Cole and said, When I want you to apologize for Nick's take, I'm gonna send you this picture. I think I think, <laughs> like I've been I have i have been trying to be very respectful to the legends because they done they they played and and, and and did their thing while they played. But I think I have to make a goof troop uh, crew. And I have a couple in mind. <laughs> what? Uh-huh. The, the goof troops. I uh, definitely it's gonna be Kenny, it gotta be Stephen A for making the whole world believe that he's a Nick fan. You know, oh yeah, for sure. Um, Bruh. They probably, like Becky gotta be there. You get what I'm saying? Uh yeah. I, I didn't want to put Candace there because I like her as a uh, she play. I really, I, 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 yeah, she, <laughs> the, her her analyst on on the next year, she gotta be in that goof troop. So that's good. There's gonna be a whole army by the time I'm finished. That's a fact. Bruh. Well, well, they finish. Meerkat gotta be there. Definitely mm-hmm. coach Meerkat. Coach yeah. Timon. Where where? All right, yo. That's the show. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll be back Sunday. And you already know, as always. Shout out the World Wide West. Everywhere we go, we leave a worldwide mess. It's a mess out here in these Knicks YouTube streets. That's the show. We out this month.